1992 brought Stanford its first 10 win season in more than a half century. At this time last year, the Cardinal traveled to South Bend and ambushed fourth-ranked Notre Dame. That outcome may have been surprising to some, but not to Colorado's Bill McCartney. McCartney has already reached college football's pinnacle with a national championship in 1990, but he has a long-time fascination with the football mind of a three-time Super Bowl winner. But for Bill Walsh, coaching genius can be a heavy cross to bear, for in 1993, he fields one of Stanford's youngest teams ever. Bill McCartney will find no relief in that fact, however, as his Buffaloes rumble into Stanford Stadium, aware of what the master may have planned. Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto. It's the Big Eight in the Pac-10 tonight as the 20th-ranked Cardinal of Stanford plays host to the 8th-ranked Buffaloes of Colorado. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. Welcome to a gorgeous night in Northern California here in Palo Alto. A matchup of a team that's great at home. Stanford, they've won their last five against non-conference opponents and taking on a Colorado team that in the last 27 outings has lost but four times on the road. But one of those was two years ago right here in Palo Alto against Stanford. Gary Daniels, and that was a much different team. In fact, both different teams than last year when they both finished in the top ten. They started in the top ten this year. Good news for Colorado fans, I guess, Gary, though. This might be a better Buffalo team than last year. Well, I think they still have to prove themselves on defense, but I know they're better on offense really for three reasons. They're going to have a much better running attack. They've been at this new pass offense for two years, and they made improvements. And that man right there, Cordell Stewart, it's his second year with the offense, and he is a threat to run the ball. And the third reason is they have the two best wide receivers on one football team, Westbrook and Johnson, over 1,000 yards each, and they will be tough to stop for this Cardinal team. Well, nobody stopped them so far through two games, and maybe the bad news for Stanford, their defense has not been able to stop anybody so far. Quick number for you, Stanford a year ago, number 10 rated defense in the country. This year, they're the number 10 rated defense in the Pac-10, and the reason is they're playing a lot of young freshmen, guys who a year ago were getting ready for the St. Francis Red Raiders in homecoming. Now they're getting ready for Colorado, and it's most noticeable in the secondary they're going to have youth in the secondary a lot of guys and they're going to have to stop a very good football team but you know bill walsh i don't think he's going to have a problem he's going to want to score points he's going to let it fly early and it's going to be a great football game bill walsh says you can never count us out we look forward to that tonight as the cardinal and the buffaloes tangle when we come back you know there's one thing that most sporting events have in common <laughs> When you see this R, the player's wearing a Russell Athletic NFL Pro-Line jersey. Hi, Warren. Hey, Joe. Russell Athletic is also the official uniform supplier of Major League Baseball. Mm -hmm. They even have in most major college and high school teams. In fact, Russell Athletic even makes great sweats and tees for the rest of us. Unfortunately, not everybody's gotten to work. Russell Athletic. It's everything you make that makes our sweats and tees so great. Hey, here's your ding-ding, big fella. Huh? Mm. Yeah. Here's Daddy's dinner. Once you get a look at those two all-beef patties. No, this is Daddy's. But you try that special sauce, lettuce, cheese, piled fresh and hot on that sesame seed bun. You've got to have a Big Mac. What you want is what you get. At McDonald's today. Stanford last year, 10 wins, 3 losses, and a blockbuster bowl victory. Tonight they take on a Colorado team that went 9-2-1 under Bill McCartney last year and now his 12th season. Tonight, if he can win, that would be number 77, and that would match the legendary Fred Folsom for the most wins ever by a Colorado coach. Bill Walsh, fourth season at Stanford, second trip around as head coach, the first one in the late 70s. Last year, his return, of course, was a success, and now 28 wins, 11 losses, and no ties here in Palo Alto. And a very confident Bill Walsh, despite the fact he has an extremely young team on the field tonight. Brad, I think that you got to know about Stanford and Bill Walsh is he knows he needs a lot of Number points. He will Mitch script Berger his offense, his first Buffalo. 25 plays. I expect that of the first 25 plays, at least... 17 passes. We'll get a look at that script as the Stanford offense will have the ball first. Mitch Berger has got it teed up. Stanford won the toss. They will receive back deep a couple of youngsters. 
freshman Mike Mitchell and Greg Camella. Back deep. Number eight and number 20. From Stanford Stadium on an absolutely beautiful evening we're underway. Mike Mitchell from the one-yard line behind a convoy. Got out to about the 22-yard line, and that's where Stanford will take over on offense. As we take a look at the Cardinal, Steve Stenstrom, single-season personal best last week in completions and touchdowns. He joins Roberts and Allen in the backfield. Justin Armour is his favorite receiver. He'll line up as a wide receiver in the slot and as a tight end. Tony Klein and David Shaw join the receiving core. And at right tackle, a change. Jeff Bailey in there with Steve Hoyminger with Bucky Kalanaugh, Jarich, and Dittman. First down, Stanford, the Cardinal working from its own 23 and a pass play on first down. Stenstrom wide open over the middle is tight end. Across the 35 goes Tony Klein, a pickup of 13 and first down. Defensively for Colorado. Man that was a newcomer of the year on defense in the Big Eight, Shannon Clavel up front with Holland and Hicks. Ron Woolfork is a Butkus candidate, number two all-time in sacks with Knutson, Johnson, and Rogers. And in the secondary, a man who had a touchdown two years ago on an interception is Chris Hudson with Lindsey Davis and Collier. Stanford, first down. This time, they're going to lose yardage on first down as Ellery Roberts gets all wrapped up and dropped for a loss. Dwayne Davis, the safety, came up to make the hit. Yeah, Darius Holland, too, the defensive end. He and Dieter will play. Colorado will try to mix up their coverages in the secondary, try to disguise the look. Zone, man, they will try to give Stenstrom a lot of looks. They know that he will need to throw the passes short, and they will try to disguise and make him hold on to that ball just a second long. Loss of a yard, second down, 11. The Stanford Cardinal from its own 35. Central got level as he let go of it, just over the outstretched arms of Justin Armour, his intended receiver. And he got some heat right away, and that's something we'll see a lot of tonight, I'm sure, from that Colorado defense. Well, that's the key, and especially if he's getting hit on quick plays like this. Look, very good rhythm, sets up, one, two, three, and really, that is going to be tough on Steve all night if he is throwing with guys in his face or around his legs like that. They do not have the protection necessary to keep those people out a long time. If he can't throw on rhythm, he's in trouble. See Stenstrom's numbers on the year last week. Brilliant. And the win over San Jose State. Going to keep it on the ground on third and long, and that one goes for no gain. Ethan Allen gets popped as soon as he touches the football, and it's John Knutson, the inside linebacker, who makes the stop. So one first down on the first play of the game, but then it's three and out after that, and Stanford will have to give it up. Aaron Mills into punt. Colorado with 10 up. Looks like they may want to put some heat on the Stanford punter. They will back off it now. Charles Johnson backpedals to the 21-yard line. And only about a three-yard return on a 44-yard kick. Just underway in Palo Alto. Two minutes into the game and no score. The Buffaloes have it on offense when we come back. Never open doors I'm home. with the sound of your voice. Our car, please. Carried your medical history in your wallet. Your wife's gonna be just fine. So this is where we stand on the atrium. Or attended a meeting. I really like what you guys have been doing, but um, in your bare feet. I may have a few other ideas. You will. And the company that'll bring it to you, AT&T.
as the season winds down, the pennant chase heats up on ESPN. They pulled off one of the greatest comebacks in Major League history. Now the Braves try to keep it up as they face the Mets tomorrow live on America's Game of the Week, ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. Steve Stetrum's offense got one first down, but now Cordell Stewart and company takes over for Colorado. First down from its own 25. And they'll keep it on the ground as Lamont Warren got maybe a yard on the first carry of the ball game. ESPN's presentation of Pac-10 football is brought to you by Bud Dry, the less filling beer with a lot more taste. Why ask why? Cordell Stewart last week played only a half. That's all they needed him in a lopsided victory over the Baylor Bears. First possession of the night for the Colorado offense. Second down and eight. And again, they keep it off the left side, and it's Lamont Warren. who got a nice gain, maybe two yards short of the first down, where Coy Gibbs made the stop. Let's check the Colorado offense for you. Cordell Stewart, fifth in the country in passing efficiency a year ago, and off to a great start again, and Warren's already carried twice tonight. Charles Johnson, one of the two All-Americans Gary talked about, a three-touchdown performance last week with Fourier and Embry, and Westbrook, the other All-American, on the other side. Most consistent man up front, Brian Stoltenberg, the center, with Irwin, Bernie, Hammond, and West. And third down at two, Colorado on its opening drive of the night. From the two tight end set, Warren goes right side this time, and he's going to have a first down. Stanford defense stretched it out, but not enough, and it'll be a first down Colorado against this Stanford group. Up front, fifth-year senior Tyrone Parker coming back from an ankle break in spring ball. So just about 100% now with Fisk and Carter. Leading tackler, Toby Norwood, inside with Coy Gibbs, who's already made a stop. The two freshmen outside, Batson and Watts. And Vaughn Bryant's got almost as much game experience as the whole defense combined with Garnett, Walker, and Swinton. That young defense we talked about to open the game tonight. First down, Colorado. And that one in nowhere land, intended for Michael Westbrook. A little miscommunication, maybe, between quarterback and wide receiver. Well, Brad, out of the four plays so far, Stanford is holding true to form. They've been in the 4-6 or bare front and trying to blitz and hold up on three of the plays in this football game. And Bill Walsh knows that he has to continue to mix up his defense and keep his young players attacking because just dropping in zones, it'll be tough on them. They just haven't progressed that far. Second down and 10. Stewart with a quick release. Intended for Johnson. Hit immediately. Number nine on number nine. Elio Swinton, the freshman, made the hit just when the ball arrived. Well, Swinton made the hit, but this was a poor throw. Watch the hitch pass. About five yards. Now watch with the ball. It takes him upfield. And that's the hitch pass has to be thrown for the downfield shoulder away from the defender. He led him right into the coverage, and Swinton gets up all happy. It's not going to be that easy all night. <laughs> There'll be a lot more in number nine and number 81 as they both trot to the top of your screen. A couple of thousand-yard receivers for Cornell Stewart on third and ten. And he's looking that way with time. Westbrook made the catch, but he's out of bounds. So the Cardinal defense holds. Well, that's a standing ovation around here, stopping a defense for a punt so far in this right. early season. They've given up 500 yards in both games, and uh, that's a pleasant surprise for them. How about that stat? Only three punts for Colorado, but all of them have gone for minus yardage on the other end. And on the other end for Stanford is Leroy Pruitt. 5'9", freshman, back at his own 15-yard line. Not a great kick by Berger. Pruitt will have a chance from the 25. But a lot of white jerseys there. And there'll be another loss <laughs> on an attempted punt return. He'll lose about four. 11 minutes and two seconds remaining first quarter. Berger does his job. Not a great punt, but his coverage team exceptional. We're scoreless in the first quarter. Safety is something we all think about. 
Buick is considered the subject from many angles. So, for frontal impacts, Buick Regal offers a driver's side airbag. And for side impacts, Regal meets 1997 government safety standards right now. Three years in advance. Why has Buick put so much into Regal? Because you put so much into Regal. Regal from Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. Tony and Diane get regular insurance checkups, just like they get regular medical checkups. I'm State Farm Agent Carlos Bermudez. I have been their State Farm Agent seven years. A family insurance checkup helps them make sure all their coverages are up to date. It's also a good time to explore options, like how their life insurance plan can be adapted to help with their daughter's college education. I think the family insurance checkup is something everybody can feel good about. State Farm is there. Both Visa and American Express Gold Cards can get you to England for the golf vacation of your life. Charlie, how did your yank do? Well, we're up on the ninth seat, and he wants to be up in two, so he pops everything he's got into the shop, including his new graphite driver. But should you have a stroke of bad luck, only Visa Gold can get you back on course, because Cape Cornwall's only pro shop Charlie. doesn't take American Express. Keep a grip on it. Visa Gold, it's everywhere you want to be. Fred Von Appen, a man in headset, defensive coordinator for Stanford. His young troops did their job the last time they were on the field and give it back to the Cardinal offense, this time from the 24-yard line. A draw play. And a successful one for Ellery Roberts. Got it out close to the 30-yard line. Ted Johnson. Veteran inside linebackers had to take on more responsibility this year. Greg Beaker and Chad Brown were there last year for Colorado. A couple guys that went on to the NFL, so this kid's had to take more of the load. More of the load in the leadership area was the most important thing. Right. Where he had to step up. He was a fine football player, but uh, to step up in leadership. Second and four. Might have been some motion on the left side. Looked like the tight end or the tackle on the left side maybe got uh, a yeah. quick drop trying to block Wolford probably down there. Pat floods our referee. False start against Stanford. There'll be a lot of people trying to block Ron Wolfork tonight. Third man of our broadcast crew with more on that's Rick Walker. Rick. Thank you, Brad. You make a very interesting point. Stanford's number one priority is to block the All-American candidate, Ron Wolfer. He's a quarterback's worst nightmare. Look to see the tight end, Tony Klein, stay in and block a little bit more than he normally would for a Stanford tight end. If they do it, Stanford should get some points tonight. If not, it could be a long evening. There he is, Butkus candidate number two all-time in Colorado sack department. Uh, Alfred Williams, who is an All-American, has that right now. Here comes Wolfork. Stenstrom got it away, but it's picked off. Dwayne Davis going the other way for the Buffaloes. Third interception of the season thrown by Steve Stenstrom. And Davis, the senior out of Gulfport, with his first pick of the year. Well, Brad Davis came from a safety position that time, read the quick throw. He saw the short drop. It was a poor throw again. Watch the throw go behind the receiver. This is what made the interception possible. And that's a bad throw on a hot receiver type position. And they're very fortunate that Davis didn't take it right into the end zone. You see it one more time. He steps in on the throw, but the receiver is stopping. And that ball was thrown very poorly to the wrong side of the receiver. Dwayne Davis, last year a strong safety, but he played free safety earlier in his career at Colorado. And back there and with the interception. Unsportsmanlike conduct penalty called against Colorado after the play was dead. So they back it up outside the 35-yard line. With 10-12 left first quarter in Palo Alto, California, Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Rick Walker with you. Stanford and Colorado, a couple of top 20s. And the Buffaloes with the first break of the ball game. Great field position now at the Cardinal 35-yard line. Stewart keeps and pitches and a fumble. The Cardinal has it. That was an ill-timed pitch by Cordell Stewart, who really didn't have a trail man there to get it to. 
So turnover for turnover. And you were looking at his position coach right there, Bill McCartney, and that's one thing that Bill is great at is saying, all right, forget it, let's go on to the next play. Here it is, an option play, and Cordell is just trying to make too much out of this play. He's hit. He's going to try to make a late pitch on a play. He gets wrapped up by Walker, and the ball just flies out. Walker man, is the man who falls on the ball and gets the fumble, and Stanford survives an early turnover. Really, both quarterbacks have been tight in this football game so far. The Stenstrom and the Stanford offense has it right back at the 31-yard line. Deep drop by Stenstrom. He's got a man wide open in the flat. Goes there. Ethan Allen, the fullback. Across the 35 to the 36-yard line, Ted Johnson with ben, Collier there for the stop. Brad, it seems a, a little funny, but when you don't have a great pass-blocking line, what you need to do is throw a little bit more because you can't let those guys tee off in third-down situations. I really expect Stanford to do a lot of short passing, trying to isolate their backs on the linebackers from uh, Colorado. That's their best chance of keeping that pressure off of Stenson. Second down, five. Keep it on the ground this time with Allen. He's going to be short of the first down by a couple. We'll bring up third down and short yardage. Look at some of the other scores from around the country. Really, both offenses have tried to improve their running game with the same theory. They've tried to get smaller in the offensive line. Monty Clark, offensive line coach for Stanford, has had his guys get smaller. There he is right there. My ex-head coach with the Detroit Lions. I put him into college coaching. Is that, <laughs> that something bad? <laughs> Put some great lines together with Don Shula back with the Super Bowl champion Dolphins before his head coaching sticks. Across the middle. First down and a lot more for Allen to the 41-yard line. 19 yards on the strike from Stenstrom. Greg Lindsay got him off his pins, but for the first time tonight, the Cardinal in Buffalo's territory. And again, that was a hot receiver. The linebacker overruns it. It's Matt Russell, number 16. He'll overrun the back. Here it is, hot gets inside of him. Whenever you have a back one-on-one, -on -one, you cannot get beat inside. That's really the Stanford game plan is try to isolate on the two inside linebackers for Colorado. That's the best throw of the night by Stenstrom. Had to be right where it ended up. First down, just outside the Buffalo 41. To the 39 goes Allen, the senior out of St. Peter, Minnesota. Holland in on the tackle. Gary's Holland and Brian Diet will share that defensive end spot tonight. Holland, a junior out of Las Cruces, New Mexico. Second down at eight for Stanford. We approach the eight and a half minute mark. First quarter and no score. And now the Cardinals are going to switch up its receiving core. Brad, another thing I think Stanford will try to do is get the ball to arm number 80, the leading receiver in all different areas. Tight end and wide receiver. Quick snap. There he is. Had his hands on it and dropped it. Whether anticipating the hit or not, I don't know. Chris Hudson let him have it, but he should have had that ball. Well, he, he heard me call the play, so, <laughs> I mean, it's easy when you call the play. Here it is, a quick slant, three-step drop. Again, get the ball to your best hand, man. Ball was a little bit... No, that ball was perfect. <laughs> when you throw a slant pass low, the receivers love you when they come back to the huddle. And uh, Justin, an ex-quarterback, will not drop many of those types of passes. There's his numbers already through just two games. Nine catches for 103 yards and a touchdown last week. And they went over San Jose State. So a third down and long situation. Something Stanford would like to stay out of because here comes the heat. Roberts broke one tackle, but he's going to be short of the first down by a couple of yards. Got inside the 35, near the 34. Made a tough catch and a good move. And that was a quick screen type play, a kind of a signature play of Bill Walsh. He tries to pick linebackers with his back, pull the linebacker, and it was just like a long handoff to get the ball to a back. Kind of, it's great as a quarterback. Get to pad your stats, too. You just throw it out there and let the guy run. A lot of thought, it seemed, put into whether or not fourth and a long two would be a feasibility. Actually, it's more like three yards to go. And so Stanford with their punter in to try to hang it for the far corner. Got it out of bounds. Inside the 10 by about a foot. Not a bad kick. And so Colorado's offense will be backed up at its nine and a half yard line. Well, you see, Bill McCartney, it's the first time he coached a position since he was back at Michigan, or really, since he was back at Divine Child High School, and uh, he kind of had a uh, 
stiff playing quarterback back there. That's right. Yours truly. He and said he had a he, had, he said he had a small forward that could shoot a little bit though, <laughs> named Danielson. But Bill has gotten more involved in the offense now. I think he's enjoying it. I think his uh, players and are enjoying having him involved, and it's going to pay off. Now. Lord Al Stewart, incomplete, intended for Johnson. Coverage by Vaughn Bryan again. And Cordell Stewart so far off to an 0 for 4 start. This is a guy that last week, just in a half, as we were talking about, ripped Baylor apart on a 14 out of 18 first half, 221 yards and a couple of touchdowns. There you see fifth all time on the Colorado passing list. Phil McCartney brought in Elliot Uzelak, who he coached at Michigan also as his uh, co-offensive coordinator, and they're going to try to run the ball very similar to the way Stanford is, more man-on-man -man blocking. Off tackle and doing a nice job to get it out to the 15-yard line. Lamont Warren, Juan Bryant came up and got him low. It'll bring up third down and five. There you see Elliot Uzelak right there. Colorado offensive coordinator. He will call it through Bill McCartney. They will send in the plays. And I, I like sending in the plays. And Elliot is a very hard-nosed, tough, run-blocking coach. He's going to be a very beneficial man in addition to this Colorado team. Third and five, Colorado. Ball loose again. Does Stanford have another fumble recovery? Boy, it has been a comedy of errors so far for Colorado. They just can't yes, they do. They're shooting themselves in the foot all night here. That time, Cordell Stewart running back run into each other. And, uh, you know, those are called unforced errors. And that's the way you can get upset in a game when you have better talent. Second fumble recovery of the night by the Stanford defense. I'm not even sure if he got the snap cleanly on this play. That almost looked like it was going to be a fumble ruski. No, he had it and no, lost he, it. His guard pulling hit him. He absolutely is left guard. And the first thing you have to do as a quarterback is to stomach that football. Put it right to your stomach, especially on inside trap plays. So Stanford at the 17-yard line of Colorado with a two tight end set and a new quarterback. And the freshman Frost almost threw an interception on his first throw. Ron Wolfork knocked it down. Scott Frost, a uh, highly recruited quarterback, 4-5-40, has a small package of plays, maybe 8 to 10 plays, and he will run the football and move the pocket around. Uh, we asked if he was going to throw, and we got a little bit of a smile from uh, <laughs> offensive quarterback, uh, uh, coordinator Terry Shea, and uh, I guess uh, he is. The first one went right in the arms of an All-American linebacker, though, who couldn't hold it. Now it's second and 10. This time he will run it. Got around Wolfork. There's that 4-5 speed to the corner. Knocked out. He got about eight yards. Greg Lindsay knocked him out of bounds. And let's go right now to Mike Tirico. Brad, we don't get to show you Auburn until their game's over because of the probation, but uh, Auburn looked great today. In Death Valley against LSU, Stan White fakes out everybody, including the LSU defense. Thomas Bailey, the touchdown, 21 points in the second quarter. And the younger Bowden is also undefeated, 3-0. Bowden boys doing well. Here, no score, 6.32 left first quarter. Steve Stenstrom back in at quarterback after Frost took a couple of snaps. Third down and two inside the Colorado 10. Trying to take advantage of a fumble recovery. Stenstrom, end zone. Inside the one, but not in the end zone. Flags are down. Tony Klein with a catch. I'll tell you, the most nervous man in the park that time was Bill Walsh. He told us, I do not want Stenstrom to be coming around, scrambling and throwing the ball across the formation. And that's just what he did. He was very fortunate to get a completion there. No indication on the penalty yet. And now, hopefully, we'll get the call if Pat's mic is working. Pass interference on the defense decline. Tony Klein with a catch and a first and goal. Tony Klein really saves this interception. He comes in, comes back to the ball and saves Stenstrom. The ball is thrown. You can see it. It's a Joe Montana type pass just up for grabs. There's about three Colorado guys and Tony Klein comes back and makes a fine catch right down to the one yard line. Nate Olson in the backfield is a blocker in front of Roberts. Touchdown.
Davis doesn't like it. Doesn't matter. 6-0 Stanford. Well, you really couldn't call this a lot of push on this play right here. But he does keep working, keep moving. His helmet falls across the line. And well, I don't really know if I see any football across the line. But uh, six points for Stanford. And uh, that's a big turnover for Colorado early in this football game. There gave room his extra point. Up and good. Six minutes and seven seconds remaining first quarter. The Cardinal does take advantage of the turnover. And they lead by a touchdown. On your next camping trip, travel with the best. Phoenix has been building custom pop-up campers for Colorado's backcountry for over 20 years. They're the lightest weight and lowest profile camper on the market and feature the only insulated pop-up available. The roomy interiors and top-of-the-line appointments make Phoenix campers the finest pop-ups available today. So before you take your next trip, stop by our factory in Broomfield and let our no-money-down financing program put you in the best pop-up camper on the market. Phoenix Pop-Up Campers is a Colorado company. Are you power hungry? Then you better hurry to your local Jeep and Eagle dealers year-end clearance because the 93 four-wheel drive Jeep Grand Cherokees are available with a V8 engine at no extra charge. This is your best chance to get a Grand Cherokee with a 220 horsepower V8, 6,500 pound towing capacity, and standard driver side airbag at huge savings. But you'd better act fast because when these powerful V8s are gone, so are these powerful savings. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. This Saturday, for one day only, your chance to call the best phone sports service free of charge. Call ESPN Update between noon and midnight for a free listen to all the scores and late-breaking sports news. Cheer. 17 yard scoring drive and four plays. Ellery Roberts from a yard out, put Stanford in front of Colorado 7 0. Cordell Stewart's off to a very slow start. His troops will have it following the kickoff touchback. And Colorado on its last two possessions, two fumbles. And the Bill Walsh offense got it down in close. This is his reaction to the touchdown by Roberts. You can see the kids on the sideline. They like. Uh, yeah, okay, touchdown. Well, what do you mean? That's as excited as I've ever That's seen right. Bill Walsh. And, and the other thing is he has to concentrate. You see the drive. It was very short. But a good play caller is always thinking about his next play. And you don't come any better than Bill Walsh at calling plays. Colorado with a first down at its own 20-yard line. Warren right up in the middle. And not much. Only about a two-yard gain. I think Bill McCartney needs to get uh, Cordell Stewart off the mark here a little bit. Uh, a couple bootlegs outside, get him outside the end, uh, run up field, get hit a little bit, and uh, that might be the key. Also, Stanford's secondary is squatting on all the short routes. I would not be surprised when they get in a situation to let it fly 30, 40, 50 yards downfield. Well, they got the two guys that can fly out there, one to the left and one to the right to the top of Westbrook. Johnson in tight on the right on the third, and the second down at seven. Play action and the throw trying to make the diving catch is Johnson and Vaughn Bryant's been right there with him all night. Well, Vaughn Bryant's right there with him because he just refuses to back up. I mean, you just cannot cover a guy that uh, that much. Stewart 0 for 5 in this football game, and the real reason is he's had a couple bad throws, yes, but the Stanford secondary, including Vaughn Bryant right there, is squatting on every throw. They need to put the ball deep. Uh, maybe not this situation in third down, but if they want to throw the ball successfully, they're going to have to loosen him up. It appears in the situation to put it in the air again. Third down, seven. Stewart with plenty of time, and there goes the ball deep. And he got it to Johnson. I don't know why you waste your time up here with me when you can be <laughs> in the booth next door. 39 well, yards. It only makes sense. You watch it. I'm sure they're seeing the same thing I am. On this particular play, you can't call a better defense. They're double, they're double teaming the uh, two players on the outside. You're going to see this safety and this corner double team here, this safety and this corner double team there. And if you throw the ball, both guys double teamed, and you still complete it, 
you know, your X is better than their O's, and uh, <laughs> that's as good as you can do defensively, and uh, he just made a great play. Charles Johnson, that's his 11th catch, averaging 21 yards a catch, and he's not going to hurt his average with that 39-yard pickup. First down at the 37. On the option, Warren on a late pitch from Stewart. He's got a first down to the 25 before Toby Norwood could drag him down. A 13-yard game for Lamont Warren. 12 yards on the plate. Lamont Warren was nicked a lot last year, and he is healthy. He's lost about 10 pounds. He ran track in spring this year, and he improved his times, and uh, he is a, uh, an improved football player, and I'm very happy with the new system of blocking. He got a first down to 25 of Stanford. Here's a counter. Warren again. This time, nothing doing. Toby Norwood back-to-back -back tackles, and I mean, he put a half that time on Warren and dropped him in his tracks. Well, one of the things the Stanford defense does is hit the holes and read very quickly the type of play blocking. Uh, Stan uh, Colorado was trying to pull linemen and lead up there, and Norwood just hit it in the face before they got started. Fred Von Appen, the defensive coordinator, we said, how young are your guys? He says, <laughs> my defense doesn't have its permanent teeth yet. So. <laughs> Norwood is a guy that's got experience, so he started all 12 games last year. He has back-to-back -back tackles. Second down of 10. Warren. Close to five. And maybe a late hit. Jason Fisk came over number 72. I think we're going to have a late hit on him. I think it was. And uh, you know, this was a big throw and big drive for Colorado because they started off so slowly and confidence was building for Stanford. And now another penalty on top of it. Uh, this is what Bill Walsh was afraid of is the big play downfield. It's great. Before we used to have to kind of not right. say anything. Now we can just <laughs> talk the way. So Lamont Warren gets a decent run and then tack on the late hit personal foul and it moves it all the way just outside the Stanford 10-yard line. Rashad Salam is in now as the lone setback in the two tight end Buffalo's formation. He can actually get a first down inside the one-yard line. This is not first and goal. Loose ball again, though, and Stewart covers it himself this time. It, Third fumble. It may have happened again. I'm not quite sure, but the linemen were pulling, and what's happening is the guards are pulling around to get the linebackers, and Cordell has to pull that ball into his stomach, let the linemen clear, and then make the pitch. Another thing, Gary, I don't know if it's bothering him, but he is still wearing a cast on his left wrist from offseason surgery on his wrist i and, really uh, yeah I, I i know that's true but i don't think he can use that one and i don't think he'd try to use that one i know simple plays he has to just put it to his stomach more quickly loss of four second and 14. Salam trying to run through those 10 men. Maybe got back to the original line of scrimmage. Tyrone Parker, the first there for Stanford. I'll tell you, I have no problem being able to run the football, but when he puts 10 the men on the line of scrimmage, and I've got two best wide receivers in college football, and they're playing bump and run two inches from their nose, go, I'm throwing the ball in the end zone three straight times. There's a, you know, you're going to see uh, eight of them right there, and then they've got two guys playing bump and run on the two wide receivers outside. That, that, you just got to throw it to the end zone. The two best athletes on the football field are your wide receivers. Let's give them the ball. And as good as Vaughn Bryant has played on the corner tonight for Stanford, overall they just don't match up with Westbrook and Johnson. Nobody in the backfield now. You know they'll throw. Stewart, incomplete. Intended for Sean Embry is tight end, and Cordell ends up on his backside. He got some heat. Well, I'll tell you, Brian Batson, you know, I said in the, in the pregame that he was getting ready for the St. Francis Red Raiders and homecoming, but this time... Uh, <laughs> He just took a bead on Cordell Stewart, and, you know, those throws all add up when you get hit early in the game. You just rush your tempo by doing it and getting hit. Mitch Berger on for the field goal attempt, the 28-yarder. Dead in the middle of the field. And the kick, somebody got a hand on it, still made it through. Oh, cow. That was ugly, but Mitch will take it. Mama Ellis may have been the guy that got the hand on it, but Berger somehow had enough zip on it to get Colorado on the board as we get another look from the end well, zone. Well, for the first five feet, it had backspin. For the next <laughs> 20 yards, it had overspin, and it just cleared the bar. 
tucked it in by the pin, didn't he? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> You know, they, they say in golf, you just write down the score. No one's going to remember that five games from now. So Berger with a field goal still. Bill Walsh, Stanford Cardinal leading with 209 left first quarter. 7-3. You can almost see when an upset starts to happen as we look at Cordell Stewart. Uh, the team that has the better talent, and, and, and let's be very fair here, Colorado has great offensive talent, especially at the skill positions. If you start beating yourself, it's just like you're... When you're playing tennis, unforced errors are the biggest uh, reason why upsets happen, and Colorado's keeping Stanford in the game because of that reason. You know, and we talked to Bill Walsh yesterday. He said, Colorado's got to make some mistakes for us to win. And Absolutely. he says, you know what? I think they might be due because they yeah. hadn't made any in the first two games this year. I got a, a chuckle out of Fred Ben Aikman. He said, uh, you know, he watching the film just like watching Friday practice. No one was allowed to tackle these guys, and uh, we just have to put some pressure on. Mike Mitchell, Greg Camella back deep. As Mitch Berger, who somehow got the field goal through, set the kick away. Mitchell, number 32, a guy that the Stanford coaching staff is very high on, is a guy that could be a game breaker in years to come. I don't think you get a chance at this one. Six yards deep, touchback, and Stanford will work from its own 20-yard line. Don't forget, coming up on Monday night, host Mike Tirico is joined by Joe Theismann, Craig James, Ron Jaworski, downtown Julie Brown. Everybody will be there. And that's for NFL Primetime Monday. In-depth interviews. Uh, the NFL players focusing on the lifestyles and personalities behind the scenes of the NFL. And a roundtable discussion, too. That's all coming up. NFL Primetime Monday at 7.30. First and ten, Stanford from its own 20. Again, out of the flat they go. And it's two, the freshman, Camella, across the 25 to the 27-yard line. This is a kid that they think can be another Tommy Vardell, maybe, somewhere down the line. Well, he averaged nine and a half yards a carry in high school, played linebacker, and uh, you know, Massachusetts High School Player of the Year. And, you know, he can receive the ball, catch the ball. It's valuable to pull them. He got eight, second down at two. Go right back to him. They don't stop it once, try it again. And good enough, it appears, for a first down as Sam Rogers tagged him pretty good to knock him out of bounds as you heard the impact on the sideline, but it looks like it's enough for a first. It's like a controlled running game, and it's very frustrating to a defensive line to not be able, no matter how good of a pass rush you have, get to the quarterback. And it's one of the keys to why Joe Montana was so successful. The offense had to play a part of it because he sets you up with a lot of short throws and gets your confidence early in a football game. Enough that Stenstrom's 7 of 10 for 62 yards. Joe Montana. He's playing with uh, what, now, Kansas City. Blitz coming. Almost looked like Wolfork was offside. He was in the backfield so quickly. That's because he was. Uh, that could be it. Ron, you're a little too quick off the ball. One of the things Stenstrom complained about last year was that because they were so new at the offense, well, should I stop here? No, he don't stop, mic? don't slow down. <laughs> is they went on the same snap count almost all year last year to keep it simple. And this year he's been allowed to change up his snap count and keep the defenses off balance, and especially against a hair trigger. Lower right hand of your corner, number 56. Wolf Fork is offsides. So a free five yards for Stanford. Wolf Fork wear number 56. He said, well, you know, some pretty good ones have worn that number. There's still a guy for the Giants that can play a little linebacker, has proven it. First and five. Blitz coming. Stenstrom over the middle. Got the Klein again is tight end and another first down. Klein's been a big part of the offense so far. I tell you, it's very tough to play a team that knows they have to score a lot of points, Brad. And in this game, they, Bill Walsh understands he has to control the clock, score points, and he's just going to keep plucking away down the field like that. So a first down, they move the sticks out to the 44, and we're in the final minute of the first quarter with the Cardinal leading the Buffaloes 7 0. Three catches for Klein already. 30 yards on the night. Roberts in motion on first down. Stenstrom across the middle again. And this time, Justin Armour picks up about five. Let's get out of Rick Walker. 
Brad and Gary just wanted to give you an update. I heard Gary mention about Stewart's wrist with the cast. It is no factor at this point, but I have to admit, guys, there's a lot of frustration on this sideline. Westbrook, you know, they want the football, and they can't get it. Give credit to Stanford's de young defense. That's right. They're doing the job so far. Cordell has been a little bit frustrated. You can tell by his facial expressions on the sideline. This is not how he planned quarter number one to go. Second and a long five. Mike Mitchell, the freshman. Stretched out nicely by the Colorado defense. And Greg Mike Lindsay Mitchell came up from the sweep. secondary to make the hit. It'll force a third down and short. By number 23, Greg Lindsay. There's Mike Mitchell. And boy, did he have some numbers as a uh, senior last year. Two-time Arizona Player of the Year. Last season, over 2,200 yards and 29 touchdowns. We'll see more of him as the game goes, but the first quarter belongs to Stanford, 7-3. Why is it always the same old story? Why ask why? Try a less filling beer with a lot more taste. Bud Dry. When it comes to a great beer, we wrote the book. This is National Car Rental. This is Conica. Why you use National Car Rental? Why National Car Rental uses Conica? So if you know this company, you should know this company. Because Conica keeps on rolling for National Car Rental. Everybody knows U.S. Air. Not everybody knows Conica. Why you get on board with U.S. Air? Why U.S. Air is on board with Conica? So if you know this company, you should know this company. Because Conica has earned its wings from U.S. Air. Before you take another full-size pickup out for a spin, remember, not one of them offers four-wheel anti-lock brakes. That's about to change. Last year, over a million new full-size pickups went out on the road. Not one carried one of these. That's about to change. You say your eyes are red, irritated, dry? Don't hide them. Help them with Clear Eyes. It gets rid of the redness and has an extra moisturizing ingredient, too. Clear Eyes. And for allergies and colds, Clear Eyes ACR. When light turns up the heat... They start the wedding about me? This shouldn't take long, honey. Nothing protects you like Degree Antiperspirant. It's body heat activated to release extra protection. Degree. Your body heat turns it on. Go ahead. Make a wish. Then share it with your Allstate agent, who knows planning makes wishes come true, and who can outline a life insurance plan to assure family security and college funding and a comfy retirement are in the stars for you. So make your wish and trust it to your Allstate agent, who wants to be your agent for life. With Gary Danielson and Rick Walker, Brad Nessler with you at Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto, where the Cardinal leads it 7-3 as we start the second quarter. Here comes the heat on Stenstrom. Got it away. Armour's got it. Broke a tackle. He's going to score. Touchdown. 48 yards. told you that Justin Armour would line up almost anywhere on this football team to run this route. Third and two for Bill Walsh is not a running situation. He lined up very close, almost in a tight end position, ran a very simple flag route, a corner route, and then a very poor tackle by Greg Lindsay right there. Did not wrap him up, and a, and a guy who's not really a speed man hits a big play against Colorado. Eric Abrams for the point after. And Stanford, a couple of touchdowns. 14 to 3 as number 20 is trying to surprise number 8 on the home field. 
Well, Justin Armour came as a quarterback. There you see he's lined up almost as a tight end. He gets chucked in a zone defense, but boy, that is not good zone defense when you give that much field on a guy, and there's a very poor tackle. You've got to bring your arms when you tackle a man who's six foot six, and whether Justin Armour runs a 4-6 or a 4-4, it doesn't matter. You can see when Stenstrom lets it go, Wolfork is going to come and get him, but when you've got a man that wide open, you just throw it to the space, and that's another seven points. You asked Terry Shea yesterday, the offensive coordinator, is Justin Armour a tight end quarterback or what? And, and they said, talk about him being a Dwight Clark club. Oh, <laughs> yeah, is he a Dwight Clark? And he says, well, I don't know. He, he's an awful fine receiver, but uh, his future may be tight end in the pros. And I said, well, at least he's got a future in the pros. That sounds good. 80 yards, seven plays. And the capper armor, 48 yards on the touchdown. So he's had a hot couple of weeks. As we mentioned, Justin had touchdown catch last week. And another here to put the Cardinal in front, 14-3. to three. The kick. Westbrook will just have to watch it go. Way out the back of the end zone with a touchback. Colorado works from its own 20-yard line. Coming up on Thursday night, CFA action. Join ESPN 744, the weekend kickoff, followed by Pookie Jones and company leading the Wildcats of Kentucky against Steve Tannehill and the Gamecocks of South Carolina. That's our Thursday night matchup right here on ESPN. Colorado's offense has sputtered so far, to say the least, and now they trail 14-3 early second quarter. Salam going nowhere. And now the Stanford defense swarming to the ball. And I think swarming is the word, Brad. Ten men were in on that tackle. It's almost like a drill when you tell your secondary guys, everybody touch the ball carrier in practice. Stanford had ten men piling on and falling into that tackle right now and I really believe that uh, the running game is important they have to stay with it and be able to run the ball but you got a Michael Weisbrook out there and haven't even thrown him a pass yet I, I wonder about it Cordell Stewart one of seven for 39 yards second down and nine and flags all over who flinched first <laughs> sounds like a movie <laughs> Disney movie <laughs> Now, Pat Flood's family is not going to be too happy about it. They yeah. planned on hearing him tonight. It's illegal procedure, Stanford. And that will bring up second down and 14. Yeah, illegal procedure, Colorado, you meant. Uh, Colorado, that. rather. Another on forced area. You're going to get a lot of penalties blocking that you have to live with. But uh, one of those ones where you just jump off, that's the one that hurts the team. It sets up an entirely different scenario. Second and 14 forces a throw for sure. And across the middle... And a first down, and Westbrook in the open field. Here he goes. One man to beat all the way to the 30-yard line. You got an All-American. You haven't thrown him a pass yet. And finally, they did. 55 yards. Well, you got to get the ball in the hands of your most skilled athletes. This was a middle screen, the wide receiver screen. Westbrook gets his hands on it, and he's such a great athlete, especially after he catches the football. He's in the secondary. This is a very safe throw. Well, that just turns the field upside down. You're going to see it coming in from the left side of your screen. It's a middle receiver. See those linemen break downfield? Westbrook has it. It's like a punt return now once he gets the football. He goes, and he's very fortunate for Stanford. He did not score on the play. Knocked out at the 29-yard line. So the deepest penetration of the night by the Colorado offense. But Salam tagged as he got the ball. Great hit by Nick Watts, the freshman, made first contact. Toby Norwood helped clean up. Salam lost a yard. Nick Watts uh, being able to stand up in a big game like this for such, such a young football player. And they got a great future. They had a great recruiting class. Bill Walsh told us they offered 25 players scholarships, and 22 said yes. Three guys they lost went to Kansas, Michigan, and Notre Dame. You're going to lose a few guys to teams like that. Two out of 25. <laughs> Loss of a yard. Second and 11. Stewart rifles one to Johnson incomplete. He trapped it. Well, third down and long coming up for Colorado. Cordell Stewart just knows he is not hot right now. He isn't feeling good. Even the long pass he threw. Uh, in the double coverage was a tough throw, so 
He's going to have to get his rhythm if Colorado's going to break loose. Third and 11. Stewart, incomplete intended for his tight end, Garrett Ford. And that'll bring Mitch Berger out. As Colorado's going to take a shot at a long field goal. He hit one earlier from 28. A knuckleball that was partially deflected. And now they're going to ask him to try to hit one from 47 yards out. He's hit him in practice, they say, as far out as 72. So just got to think about this as a practice kick right in the middle from 47. Going to be short. Yeah. He hit a nine iron. He should have had an eight iron on that one. Wrong was, club. He did. Hit the wrong club on it. 12.58 to go first half. Stanford right now surprising Colorado. <laughs> using high-resolution robotic cameras in order to give you a closer look at the fit and finish of our Lincoln cars. To achieve this kind of quality, we not only employ technologically advanced machines, we also employ dedicated people who bring to Lincoln a craftsmanship that can't be duplicated by a mere machine. Sorry, fellas. Lincoln, what a luxury car should be. Hi, this has to be in L.A. tomorrow. No problem, sir. With express mail from the Postal Service, you're never left in the dark. Yes, your package is in L.A. and will be delivered. Morning. From just $9.95, we track, we trace, we deliver for you. In the past, to gain weight, you had to eat food loaded with fat and cholesterol. Now there's GNC's Pro Performance 1850 Weight Gainer, scientifically designed with 1,850 fat-free calories per serving. Pro Performance 1850, only at General Nutrition Centers. What's new from Xerox? Xerox Extreme 450 Antifreeze and a new four-year guarantee. We've taken our promise to extremes. For the next four years or the next 50,000 miles, we guarantee the temperature never drops below Xerox. with a lead and the ball back after the missed field goal. The Cardinal with 12.58 left first half up 14-3. Motion on the right side of the line it appeared on Stanford. And I think Jeff Bailey, number 76, uh, flinched a little bit. And that'll back it up to the 25-yard line. Illegal procedure against the Cardinal. Jeff making a start tonight. Normally, Steve Hoyam would be playing that position, but uh, Hoyam banged up and didn't practice all week. So Jeff Bailey, the senior out of Orem, Utah, gets the call. First and 15. Play action. Step to him on the slant. Whoa, what a shot. Holding on to the ball. David Shaw. He only got about three, <laughs> and he paid the price. ESPN's presentation of Pac-10 football is brought to you by Lincoln Mercury and the complete line of 1994 Lincoln and Mercury automobiles. And by the makers of Extreme 450 antifreeze coolant, who guarantee the temperature never drops below Xerox. Wayne Davis dropped below Xerox on that hit. Mm. You know, I recognize your voice, but how do they get the band in and out of here so fast? I'll tell you what, we've got a great uh, orchestra here with us. <laughs> the Jeff Himes Orchestra. Wayne Davis Sr. Starting safety. And he has an interception tonight and also a headache. Well, he came up and made the big hit, but he felt it right away, too. Apparently all right. And Dwayne will come out for a play and be back in there, we hope. Meanwhile, a four-yard pickup on uh, David Shaw's reception, so it will be second down at six. 
You'll see Davis coming from the right side of your screen. Times it beautifully. Comes up as a safety as he's supposed to come up. And a real nice job that time holding on the football by Shaw because he got smacked. That's from 11 out of 14. Keeps it on the ground of Mitchell. And Mitchell out near the 37-yard line. Still about three yards short of the first down. Wolfork made the tackle. If you've watched Stanford play football until this year, when Dennis Green was here, you saw their offensive line be huge. 300-pounders where they would block and push. Of course, Bill Walsh never has had that style at, at San Francisco. He's brought in. He's slimmed out his offensive line. And people like Jurich, number 66, who pulled on that play, are expected to run now. Ronnie Clark says, I don't need those pachyderms anymore. Those big guys. And they've lost some weight. We'll see if they can push Colorado back on a third and three. Armour. Very close. Yeah, I don't think he got it that time. I think he got popped just before he got out there for the first down play. Sam Rogers, I think, is the guy who came up and got him. But Armour, again, lined up in the same position that he ran the touchdown play, only this time he came across the formation. It'll be a punting situation. Fourth down, a couple of feet to go, and Aaron Mills will come in to give it up. And Charles Johnson finally has to hustle back. Wasn't ready in punt return formation. Now steps back to his 20-yard line for Colorado. Nice punt. Johnson back pedals on the 13, and a great coverage by the Stanford special teams. John Sims got down there to make the hit. 47-yard punt and nothing doing for Charles Johnson on the return. But right now, it's still Stanford's ball game with 11.28 remaining in the first half. They're up 14-3. Lisa's great, but there's something about Sharon. Sharon's okay. Lisa, whew, what a knockout. Why is the grass always greener on the other side? You lucky dog. Lucky dog. Why ask why? Try less filling beer with a lot more taste. Bud Dry. It's one thing. Mm, nice. That's beyond question. Mark and Rennie and little Lindsay are a young family just starting out. They don't have a lot of money for life insurance. I'm their State Farm agent, Gaylord Mooseman. Instead of giving Mark and Rennie a big life insurance sales talk, I did a lot of listening. And we came up with a plan that's going to work for their budget and little Lindsay's future, too. State Farm agents are good listeners because we want you to have life insurance you can live with. State Farm sells life insurance. To truly appreciate Lincoln Mark 8's premium sound system, just crank it up. Lincoln Mark 8, the luxury coupe with a 32 valve, 280 horsepower sound system. Drive everything else first. Steve Stenstrom not only having a great night so far statistically at quarterback, but he's also our Lincoln Mercury student of the game. 3.1, a public policy major involved in Athletes in Action and community outreach program. Visits elementary kids around the area. And right now on the horn, trying to figure out what to do the next time he touches the ball. So far, he has helped get his team in front 14-3 over 8th ranked Colorado. Cordell Stewart, broken play, and a loss. Come about three. Jason Fisk is there. So is Nick Watts and Tyrone Parker. And right now, the Colorado offense, Gary, just not firing. Other than that long pass to Westbrook, they've really done nothing. Well, they've, they've gone to a passing offense, and they really need to pass the ball downfield. I mean, they're going to have to throw it downfield no matter if you've got a guy in there playing quarterback and he's having a bad night. You've got to let him work his way out of it. And Cordell Stewart has to throw more passes to get comfortable with the football game. Second down. And 12. Plenty of time. Goes out in the flat. Salam. 
They got back across the original line of scrimmage and maybe another yard or so. Brian Batson let him have it there, and he'll still bring up a third down and long situation. I'll tell you, for a young football player, Brian Batson's having a nice game so far. That time he dropped into his coverage, took away the first throw, forced the quarterback to throw it to the back, and then came up with good pursuit and made the play. That's perfect defensive coverage. Colorado came in 55% of their third down conversions. Tonight it's been a different story. They got 136 yards, but only two out of six on their third down attempts. Let's see how they do here. Under a blitz, Stewart Johnson, first down. Out to the 27, maybe the 28-yard line. Well, I'll tell you, that's what I'd be doing. Sending those receivers down, letting them throw the ball under, under a good, comfortable feeling. You've got guys that know how to catch the football, that want the football, and, you know, that... Charles Johnson, I mean, he's as competitive as a guy as you'll ever find. And I like throwing to those types of players. That was a perfectly thrown pass. A couple of catches tonight, and again, his average coming in was over 21, and now it's 25-5. And he's got his team a first down at the 29-yard line. 9.45 to go first half. 14-3, Stanford leading Colorado. Stewart going deep for Johnson. And he couldn't quite hold on. Bowen Bryant broke it up. As we go to Mike Tirico. Mike. Brad, big plays the story. West Virginia and Maryland. This is Jake Kelchner, the Mountaineer quarterback. 67 yards up top to Jay Kearney. They survived Maryland's Scott Milanovic, who threw for 451 yards. Mountaineers win by five more scores and highlights at halftime. Tell you what, you get Maryland in the game, you know there's going to be some points up there. Better you? check the light bulbs <laughs> in the scoreboard. Second down and ten. Stanford again with about eight men up on the line of scrimmage, and now they back off it a bit. On the option, Stewart to the short side of the field. Salam, sideline, and run out of bounds, but not before he got to the 48-yard line of Stanford. Gives him 23. Brad, this was definitely an audible this time by Cordell Stewart. He saw the overload. They saw the bear-type look. He went to an on-balance line, put the tight end in motion, and ran the option back to the short side. You see it on balance right, option back into the sideline, makes a nice pitch. Notice he pitched it with his right hand because he has his hand cast on the left right. side, and Salam with the great speed turns the corner. You know, Nick Watts, a freshman linebacker, did a nice job on Stewart, but he had nobody there behind him to help. First down, Colorado. At the 48-yard line of Stanford. Salam the other way. Inside the 45 to the 44. Well, privately, a lot of people who follow Colorado football is saying Salam is the man of the future, the big play guy. Has great speed, had a great spring. Of course, Lamont Warren ran spring track, but, uh, you know, he is a guy who can take it all the way. Rashawn played eight-man football in high school. He says, I'm tired of hearing about that. I don't care how many guys are out there. <laughs> and he's... Hey, he's getting ready for arena football. Uh-huh. <laughs> Second down. And six. Stewart again looks to be changing things at the line. Good run to the left. Should have. <laughs> Only got about two off the right. That's really not fair. It, it, they are going to owe stacks in, uh, in different ways, but the secondary was tilted to the right that time. One of the things that and it's, I think is giving Cordell Stewart a little problem on those pitches is Colorado's guards line up extremely deep at the line of scrimmage. They seem to be almost deeper than they, he is when he's taking the snaps. It's something that they might want to look at as the game goes on. Well, it's cost him a couple of fumbles already. Big third down for Colorado. They'd like to keep the drive alive. Third and a long two. You can see him. They're almost as deep as he is as he's taking the snap there. Salam. I don't think so. And now maybe the first interesting situation of the night for Colorado. Do you go on fourth down and less than a yard? Well, I think I've got the best defense in this football game, and I think I've been telling our team we were going to run the ball all year and spring practice was devoted for it, I'm going to go for it. Here comes the extra tight end. On fourth and one, Colorado will go for it. They're 0 for 1 on the season in fourth down conversions. That's how much they've got to make. Westbrook in motion. First down, Buffalo. Salam 
Nice, nice spin move to get the extra yardage. This is the type of uh, confidence that your football team will give, will get when you go for it on fourth down, and they really need something trailing 14 to three at this point in this football game. Uh, look at that shot right there, how deep the guards are as they read and pop through. They call it a horn technique. They'll read the linebackers and either go through or wrap around, depending on what the tackle does. Stewart on a blitz on first down, throws. Deep middle, broken up, intended for Westbrook. And again, Vaughn Bryant's done a nice job in coverage tonight. Did an excellent job, but I think the ball was still thrown a little bit behind Westbrook that time. That ball could have been thrown deeper, and you saw Cordell Stewart just make that motion right there. I should have let it go. Kind of underthrew it. You'll see Westbrook have to kind of turn and reach back for this, and that's really what made the play, and Norwood almost intercepts this play. Vaughn Bryant, as we said, has done a nice job. He's got the most experience. How much experience? Look at the guys wow. playing with him. He's yeah. got 27 starts, and the rest of them are babies back there. And if this is the third game, that means two of those starts were in the first two games this year. Exactly. Second down at 10. <laughs> Top sledding on the ground. David Walker made first contact. Coy Gibbs in on the tackle as well. We saw Joe Gibbs, Coy's dad, out jogging today. He's here at the ball game tonight to watch his son play a little linebacker. And Coy trots off after helping out on the hit. Maybe a little bit shaken, as a matter of fact. Third down and eight. Across the middle, and Johnson's got it at the 21-yard line. First down. I'll tell you, the man can throw the football when he sets up and knows what he's doing in his confidence. This time, he steps back in the pocket, takes one little pattern-type motion step, comes up, and watch this ball rifle across your screen. And when you're throwing it to that good of a wide receiver, Brian has great coverage, but that execution is going to work. Charles Johnson, three catches now for 65 yards. <laughs> And Cordell Stewart starting to warm up. Had a terrible start, still only well, 5 of 15. Here, one on one coverage outside. At the 21 yard line of Stanford. There's the option again. Boy, what a pitch that was. Touchdown! That was the fastest 21 yards we've seen tonight. You talked about Salam's speed, and maybe he's the future backfield. Maybe he's the present backfield. <laughs> I'll tell you, Cordell Stewart makes as nice a play as you've ever wanted to see on an option. Remember, he's got a cast on his left arm, and we watch this play. When you blitz, watch as he comes down the line of scrimmage now, isolating on the end man of line of scrimmage. He will have to account. He steps inside, frees it right there. He throws that ball out with his right hand. He throws it backwards, and Slom, go ahead, just turns inside. Great downfield blocking by the tight end for EA and the wide receivers, and that's a sprint to the end zone. Nobody catches it. 21 yards and the bat of an eye. For Rashan Salam, the sophomore out of San Diego. And now Colorado an extra point away from cutting the lead to four. There must have been an excessive... Uh, uh, type of penalty on there uh, because Jordan Crack is very upset. This is an excessive demonstration after the touchdown. Coach McCartney normally keeps his cool. He didn't like the call. No, he'll have to spend some time in confession after that one. <laughs> Stanford by four. <laughs> It happens once a year, the time when the best come along at the best price of the year. This year, the best are at Burt Nissan. Nissan Altima, a whole new kind of luxury car. The hottest selling car in America, Nissan Maxima. And get this, Nissan Pathfinder at $219 a month, just in time for the Colorado winter. When Burt says closeout, we mean it. These Altimas, Maximas, and Pathfinders won't last long at these prices. So don't miss this one. Burt Nissan, 54 years and still the Rocky Mountain leader.
Hi, I'm Jake Dabbs. Simmons has teamed up with American Furniture Warehouse to give you fast, on-time, guaranteed delivery on any Simmons mattress or box spring. We're one of the nation's largest Simmons dealers, and we guarantee you the lowest prices. And now, for a limited time, you can get any Simmons Goody Rest mattress, like the Luxury Firm, Ultra Premium Extra Firm, or the World Class Goody Rest, and get an extra 10% off of our already guaranteed lowest prices. And we guarantee fast, on-time delivery. A highlight goes like this. Loose ball in the end zone. Ball on it, no chance. My feet are light, and I've got the moves. At the 50, I see Myers. Not now, Chris. I'm a busy man. And as I cross the goal line, I laugh, knowing my agent has just cut a deal for my very own fitness video. Yeah, that's my sports center I like. He's going and going and going. He's just been mad for two minutes. He, he, you know, he learned from the best, Bo Schembechler, but he did as good a Bo Schembechler as I've ever seen. He's upset now. After he took it out on the referee, then he went back to his own player and said, we don't need that. Salam that time did a little bit too much in the end zone. Bill was saying, I'm going to kind of sanitize a little bit. <laughs> good. That the guys, they're just having some fun. They scored a uh -huh. touchdown. It was a big play. It, it was a little bit more demonstrative than that. He said something about buffalo yes, something. Yes, and, uh, and uh, buffalo chips. Yeah, I think that was it. That was it. At any rate, his kicker will have to back up and kick from the 20. And this could give Stanford great field position. They've still got 544 to work and a full complement of timeouts. Well, remember what a great drive it was. It started out with that curl pass to Johnson on third down. I mean, 86 plays. Stewart, you know, did a great job. And they had everything in it. Fourth down play, a great play on the option. We're going to show you one more time after the kickoff his great pitch on that play. So Berger to kick in Mitchell and Camilla back deep. This will be Mitchell from the 14. And Mitchell just takes it straight ahead and has excellent field position just about to the 39 yard line. You got a broken left wrist, so you just improvise and you pitch it with your right hand. What a play. Connects right into him and watch Salam just turn up. This is an alley run on an option. When you do this, you've got big guys out in front of you that are blocking and wide receivers, and that's a sprint to the end zone. And that's some speed, and I'll tell you, almost let that ball go too early, too, but then he does a little bit of excessive stuff. Nice to see Cordell Stewart come off the mark, and he really did it by having those guys let him throw the football. And as Gary alluded to, the drive, 86 yards, 13 plays, 616, the time used to get back to it in four. Stenstrom goes to his safety valve. Klein is tight end. Got his fourth catch of the night. Got about six That's or seven end, out of Tony it. Klein on a pass from Steve Tony Klein's been a busy tight end. Came in with seven catches through the first two games. And uh, it's a familiar name to NFL fans. Tony Klein's dad, seven years with the Raiders and a couple years with the 49ers. Nice job by Ted Johnson, who drops Greg Camilla for a loss. Greg Camilla, number 34, the ball carrier. Johnson, a 6'4 junior out of Carlsbad, California. A loss of one. Grew up in Iowa, then moved to California. They call him the Midwest Surfer. <laughs> He's surfing all over people out there right hey. now. Hanging 10, whatever. When in Rome, do as the Romans, There huh? you go. Third and four. Over the middle, and it's Clyde again. First down, Stanford at the 29. 27 yards to the tight end this time. Well, I'll tell you, Dwayne Davis is very upset with himself. Tony Klein is, is not a 4 5 40 man, and he just turned Dwayne Davis around. You can see him. He's still patting himself on the head. Coming from the end zone, right side of your screen. Watch. One fake, one way. He just did not stay and give the man enough cushion and overruns him really twice on that play. And, you know, for a big tight end, you've got to expect your safety to cover better than that. 11 straight completions for Stenstrom. Look at those numbers. Oh, and he almost had number 12 on a ricochet. He almost had number 12 and 13. <laughs> Two guys from Stanford hit that ball, and then Armour gets just absolutely leveled that time by Dalton Simmons, number 7. Almost caught by number 80, 
She throws it through Klein's hands, and then Armour is the unfortunate guy. He's like a guy at a baseball game getting a line drive and a bat at the same time. Ooh. Woo. Armour's going to say, you know, I don't mind getting hit when I'm the intended receiver, but when I wasn't even in the play, this is no fun. Yeah, I was just back there minding my own business. Yeah, he's going to say, he puts his arm around Billy, says, you know, genius, <laughs> we got to redraw that one. <laughs> Second down at 10. He's still trying to clear the tears out of his eyes. Pads are adjusted. He'll be back in. Meanwhile, his teammates at the 29-yard line of Colorado, second and 10. 4.26 left in the half. 14-10 Stanford lead. And it's intercepted. Chris Hudson picks it off. And that was a ball that could have been caught, too, by Klein. That one skipped out of his hands. And the veteran Chris Hudson has got his third interception of the year. Well, you can't draw him up any better than that. You can't have better protection. Stenstrom comes out, and he can't throw it any better than this. Tony Klein has this ball go right through him. You can see him. It's a bootleg. He's got Davis on his hip. The ball's going to hit him right between the 8 and the 7. It bounces off, and Hudson is the recipient of an interception. So the mistakes crop up for both teams. First down, Colorado. And they get it right back. Intercepted. Tilly Connect has got it right back for the target. If you can watch from behind, I think Bill McCartney that time is telling him, you stayed too long with your receiver. You eyeballed them all the way. You led the defense to the man you want to throw. If it's not there, come off it. Watch it. His head's left, 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 left. Makes the throw, and he sends a, a linebacker just dropping into that play. And you just can't force the ball in there that tight, even if you're going to your great receiver for EA. Connect with an easy interception. Second time tonight that we've had back-to-back -back turnovers on successive plays. And the Cardinals got it right back. Stenstrup. Throws high, finally finding the handle, Ethan Allen. And he got it down to the 11-yard line. Pickup of nine. John Knudsen made the tackle. Ethan had to work to find the handle on that one yeah. and made a nice gain after he did. Brad, let's give a little bit of a sleuth. They left tackle in this game so far, Seth Detman. He had the big assignment of blocking uh, an All-American, Wolfork, and he's done a great job to see what his size is. He, he, you know, it'd be two good basketball players playing in that situation, but he's backing up. He's got them all day, big on big. That's what Rick Walker talked about earlier. So far, Stanford doing its job, and they've got a first down with Ellery Roberts. First and goal at the six-yard line. Yeah, he came out the backside of a trap that time. Good job by Roberts having patience with the trap play. Let the pursuit go by and kind of came out the back door. Good running back can do that. This is when Stanford brings in the beef. Nate Olson in the backfield, 252 pounder. Brad, no one has a better passing attack from the five and 10 yard line in than Bill Walsh does. He will cross people and get people open. Got one wide out, that's David Shaw up there in the top left corner of your screen. On the inside give, a little trap play that trapped no one. Ellery Roberts. And I think he lost at least a yard. John Knudsen again, the inside linebacker, number 36, made the hit. A junior out of Great Falls, Montana. And we've got a timeout. Stanford takes a break. 2.49 remaining first half. The Cardinal try to put more points up. They already lead by four. 99 years ago, we built our first Kelly Springfield tire. In that time, Americans invented TV. We fought in two world wars. We flew the first airplane and settled the West. We all had to start somewhere, and someone had to be first. Kelly Springfield, America's oldest tire company. <laughs> and 
interpretation of the original. A safari rarely lasts longer than a few weeks, unless it's a safari maintained with genuine AC oil filters, because over hill, dale and wadi, no other filter can track down, trap and capture more dirt. So, AC oil filters keep your engine in the hunt for a longer life. AC Delco. It's like buying time. Now through September 30th, save up to $11.60 on AC spark plugs and filters. On the weekend kickoff show this Thursday, Chris told you about Fishbowl 47, a game the Arabia Shriners have in Virginia for charity. Virginia State won the game 40-17, to a big game for Gregory Clark. Scores and highlights with Craig and the coach coming up on the halftime report. Now let's see what Stanford does near the goal line. Brad? All right, Mike, they're seven yards away right now. Brad, Bill, uh, Bill Walsh and his offense likes to pick people down in this area. Let's see if they cross people and try to pick somebody open. Armour and Shaw, the wide receivers. Klein, the tight end, already has five catches tonight. Second and goal, Stanford. Stenstrom just overshot Armour. He had the inside position on Chris Hudson, but wow. too much on that throw. Uh, he beat him too cleanly that time. Chris Hudson has to get up inside of a very tall receiver and not let him have that slant. He had no help inside. So it brings up third down and goal from the seven. You have to get to the right side of your screen. He takes one step and he opens up inside. He actually grabs him too, but the ball was not very well thrown. We can't say that too many times tonight for Stenstrom. He's thrown an interception, but he has been red hot throughout the first two quarters. Third down and goal, Stanford. End zone, touchdown. Got it to him that time. Anytime they put that wide receiver in that tight formation, it seems to confuse the defensive backs. I don't know why it is. But, you know, that's their leading receiver, and he just ran down the middle of the field, turned around, he was wide open. That cannot make him happy. There he is. He lined up close to the screen. They cross people. He turns around, and it's against the zone. He's just running in space, the number one receiver on the team, and that's really uncalled for when you've got this type of passing attack. Everybody in the stadium knew it was coming. It's going to be a pass. Extra point attempt coming up. Eric Abrams. Good. With 2.40 left in the half. It, it, it's very tough on a defense when you put fast receivers and move them inside. I can recall Jerry Rice running numerous plays and Dwight Clark also be lining up in that situation for the 49ers. And Bill Walsh has just brought his regular offense with him. And for Armour, four catches tonight, 62 yards and two touchdown Stanford pulling the surprise they have been known to be able to do that against highly ranked teams and number eight Colorado is in a little bit of trouble we've been talking about Dwight Clark all night where is he? he's with Rick Walker Rick thank you Barry you're talking about the comparisons between Mr. Armour well he we got the real McCoy right here and Dwight Clark got to make you feel good to see this young man come in and demonstrate a lot of the skills you had with the 49ers well, it's nice to see Bills using the same type personnel that he did back in the early 80s. Slow white guys. <laughs> <laughs> Describe that play for us, if you will. Well, it's pretty much like uh, in the early 80s when Bill would just, he would put us all over the place. That time, I think Justin was in tight and just ran kind of an option play. It looks like he could go either way, out or in, and he chose the hook and stints from found him. All right, thank, all right, guys, back upstairs. This is Michael Westbrook from the four. Not much there. The only trouble is uh, the slow white guy. He was talking to Rick Walker, who was a slow black guy in the NFL. <laughs> Here's the scoring drive. Sorry, you Rick. You guys are terrible, man. <laughs> 20 yards in five plays. Seven-yard touchdown catch for Justin. Hate to see Dwight losing his looks as he gets older, too, I, don't you? I don't you? think that's going to happen, is it? <laughs> Uh, we got 234 left in the half. We're having a good time. There's there's our slow tight end right there. I can't believe you said that. I'm not a quarterback in the league that could outrun me. First down. Colorado now finding itself in a strange position, down 11 points because they throttled the first two teams they played this year, Texas and Baylor. They were up 42 to nothing on Baylor last week before. Baylor was able to come back and at least make it respectable on the scoreboard and now in a difficult situation being down 21-10. Yeah, Colorado needs to have some sense of urgency right here. There's still two minutes and 15 seconds. They are one of the best teams in college football at scoring points with a two-minute drill. 
They need about a, at least a field goal to bring them within eight points. We work our way down inside two minutes to go first half. Nice play fake by Stewart. Deep ball. Charles Johnson's got it to the 30-yard line. That should put C.J. over 100 yards receiving on the night in the first half. Boy, I tell you, this guy, he just gets open like uh, he just snuck in off the bench because uh, he can really run. Gets, he's got help inside, runs back by both people. Again, double coverage that time in the secondary, and Stanford just splits them, and David Walker, and he just does, makes a beautiful throw. And, boy, Charles Johnson, just a lovely receiver to throw the football to. Tell you what, Colorado can do it when they get in this two-minute drill, and they have done it over the years recently. Here comes a blitz on Stewart, got rid of it. And they get it out of bounds. Lamont Warren made the catch. Tough throw by Stewart with people draped all over him. And this is what we've been talking about since 88. Look at how many times they've had it and a 75% conversion rate, if you will. They're looking for seven in this situation, but even a field goal would make this thing look a lot better before half. Well, actually, bring within eight points where a touchdown on a two-point play would tie the game now. But I still think with a minute 30, they got plenty of time to get seven points on the game. I would not be conservative. Second down at three. Colorado at the 22-yard line of Stanford. Warren in motion out of the backfield. Stewart wide open on a hook to Johnson again. And Charles has it to the 11-yard line. Picked up of 12 more. Well, you know, when you run a route from the 22-yard line and you run a hook and you're open by 12 yards, you ran a good route. You sure did. We've been talking about Vaughn Bryant playing well. That time he got a little bit turned around by number nine. What a great person he is and what a great football player he is. Five catches, 123 yards for Charles Johnson. We haven't hit halftime yet. We got the makings of a great second half coming up if Colorado gets a touchdown here. And Lamont Warren broke one tackle and then tripped up as he got down to the eight-yard line. Yeah, they should take a timeout here, and they will. But they have plenty of timeouts left on the board, and they don't want to go into halftime. They can take their time and, and call a play. You can see Bill turn around and look around. I was signaling time out. And we're just 58 seconds away from halftime. And at halftime, scores and highlights. Mike Tirico and the gang will have for you. Syracuse ties Texas. Had a chance to win the final seconds on a field goal and missed it. Major League Baseball pennant races. Folks out here happy on, uh, in the Bay Area with San Francisco winning today and the Braves a late collapse for a loss that tightens the National League West a little bit more. Lee Corso, Craig James, and Mike Tirico. 58 seconds away from our halftime show. 21-10 Stanford. And right now, Coach McCartney saying, all right, son, let's get it in the end zone. This is a guy that can run a quarterback draw, possibly. Maybe they're too far out right now. Second and goal at the eight. We've already seen him run the option both left and right and pitch it with his uh, wrong hand. So uh, he, he can do it all. That, that makes it tough when you're uh, defensing 11 people and one of the running backs. It's a one-back set, but there's really two guys that can run there. Both the great wideouts there to the bottom of your screen. Stewart batted down by Nick Watts, a freshman. I'll tell you, that was in your face. He blocked that one. His head ball was barely let go, and he let it go. And it was smacked back in his face. Nick Watts just coming on block from the outside. Cordell hangs in the pocket, has to pull it down just one time, and that's really what allowed Watts to come in and deflect the pass. Nick's had a good game. Made his first career start last week. Just a freshman, a true freshman. And so in his second starts, had a pretty good ball game. We've got a timeout with 53 seconds left. Again, the, the clock was stopped, but I still Anderson think it's a good Chevrolet timeout, especially when it's third and goal. Well, actually, it's third, and they can make a first down inside the one, but this is a huge first down, third down play, and uh, they might as well take their time and get everybody on the same page. Colorado, one time left, they can stop it. But as Gary said, for all practical purposes, unless they end up with a strange play, this one's either going to be a field goal attempt coming up after this play, or it will be a touchdown because they'll go to the end zone. It's kind of hard not to call that option play again if I was calling plays. I mean, you got uh, two great players having your hands on the ball potentially, and the way Westbrook and Johnson block downfield and demand attention downfield, you have pretty good odds in your favor. So the offense on one side talks it over, 
And on the opposite side of the field, Stanford. Hey, Brad, speaking of option plays, that was a great option play. Uh, Northwestern runs for the two-point play. Bad. Gary Barnett, of course, was offensive coordinator here with Colorado. Fred Von Appen, defensive coordinator, told us yesterday, says we give up more yards than a, a linen factory. <laughs> they have given up some yardage so far this year. But they're hoping not to give up the final eight of this drive. Third down and eight. Just outside the eight. Here's the option. Stewart, late pitch. Warren, touchdown. I, I go for one here now, too. I just get that game within four points. That's okay. But the option play, you've got two great football players. I don't think that surprised Fred Von Appen right there. He knew it was coming. He played zone defense that time. But when you have two great athletes potentially have in your hands, he goes inside this time. And then when the linebacker turns around to help, that's when the pitch becomes available. And he makes the play. Nick Watts should have stuck with the, with the option. Man. You saw the hesitation by the freshman Watts. We just talked about what a good game he's had for a youngster. And that time, he got caught right between uh, a rock and a hard place. Well, his, there, assignment, no his assignment was the pitch man. Cordell Stewart would not have scored running the ball inside. He should have stayed with his assignment. That's a freshman mistake, and it cost him seven points. 21-17. You get another look, and you'll see number 54 out there with a little indecision. When he turns in, that means Warren has no one on him. Warren makes a nice catch. Again, the receivers watch the right side of your screen. Good blocking downfield, and that also helps for the touchdown. 82-yard drive, seven plays. There's Nick Watts, and we're not going to tell you that he's not going to make a lot of big plays going the other way for Stanford in the next three and a half years. That time just got caught out there. And you see some people coming over to let him know, hey, don't worry about it. Yeah, a big comeback for Cordell Stewart in Colorado, but especially for Cordell Stewart in this first half of this game when he started so slowly. But, you know, when you're playing option football, you have to play assignment defense. And that's what Nick Watts didn't do on that play. Stick with his assignment. 21-17. And you notice no celebration following the touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll tell you, I noticed another thing. We, we set up the fact that they are a great two-minute offense, and, uh, you know, they scored again, so their percentages are going to go up. Went 82 yards in a hurry. Mitch Berger's got it teed up. We still have 47 seconds left. It's a halftime, and uh, it's funny, we'll try it again. It's kind of funny when you can sit up here, and, and, and everybody, you know, I mean, you and everybody knew also. I mean, option call was the most obvious call, I think, Coach Van Appen was thinking the same thing, and uh, it's still, when you perfect it and you work it with good execution, it's tough to stop. That's a key, execution, and they have done it brilliantly a couple of times. That last time for eight yards and a touchdown, it has tightened this game up to a four-point difference. And I think Mitch has got it teed up there enough to stay on until he kicks it off this time. Squibs it, line drive. Touched by Mitchell. And now he'll down it. And while he downs it, we'll take it down to Rick Walker. Rick. Where's our camera? Burgers okay. Down by number 30. Yeah, Van Oppen made a, you made a good, very good point on that, uh, Gary, about the young linebacker. And Watts has made some pretty good plays. Van Oppen was low-key, didn't get excited, just told his young freshman, that's all right, settle down, we'll get it next time. We'll get it next time. Back to you guys. And they're still talking things over with those guys on the sideline. Six or seven freshmen play a lot on this defense because seven starters lost off that defense of a year ago that Gary was talking about. Not only was highly ranked in the Pac-10, they were 10th in the country. And four of the guys of the seven they lost are playing in the National Football League. So you can't lose that type of talent and not expect to have to go with some guys that are a little bit green. Stanford keeps it on the ground. I think they're willing to let this 40 seconds go away and head to the locker room up four at halftime. Yeah, I, I think if they started throwing the ball down around the 20-yard line right here, Colorado would have a better chance scoring than Stanford would if they're going to run a draw or a screen-type safe pass again. Sandstrom in trouble and swarmed under. And Wolf Fork 
And Rodgers combined on the hit. Yeah, you really can't blame that one on the offensive line, though. That was a three-step drop, and uh, Stenstrom did a good job that time just holding on to the football and going into halftime with the lead. We've had some turnovers. We've had some offensive fireworks, and we have had a heck of a first half from Palo Alto. And at halftime, the home team and Bill Walsh trying to pull off an upset. But Colorado is closed at the end of the second quarter. It's 21-17 Cardinal. Colorado's largest daybed dealer, Endless White Camelback Daybed, with back in two sides is $39, and one thirty-nine complete with Simmons Daybed Mattress and Link Spring. This white, European-style, high-back daybed is $69, or one sixty-nine complete. And this black, futon bed, complete with futon mattress, is now only one eighty-eight. Register for a free $5,000 shopping spree and 100 other great items. It's the movie everyone is talking about, but no one is telling its secrets. You vanished. No, you talk to me. You've heard of this. The New York Times calls the crying game a brilliant thriller, and one of the ten best films of the year, says Joel Siegel, USA Today, and the L.A. Times, Golden Globe nominee for Best Picture. It's funny the way things go, never the way you expect. It's Jody! The Crying Game, rated R. If you want to be a bigger and stronger athlete, you have to be a bigger and stronger person. Steroids just make you think you are. If you or someone you know needs help or information concerning drug abuse, call this toll-free number, 1-800-662-HELP. This message provided by the NCAA. Stanford Stadium, the home team in front, 21-17, as we're just about set to start the third quarter. Welcome back to Palo Alto, Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson. Gary, we talked about Bill Walsh saying, you know, Colorado's maybe due for some turnovers. We've got to force some. They have. They've turned two of them into touchdowns. But Colorado shows why they're number eight. They close the gap to four at halftime. And I think Stanford's shown that they have the potential to move the ball all night. They're going to use a short passing attack. They have been able to control the protection. But their defense is still susceptible to the big play. And that's going to be a great game for us to watch. Statistically, you take a look. Only 27 yards rushing by Stanford. That might be a little bit misleading. They throw so many passes that look like runs. Uh, it, it's part of their running game that they pass the ball short. But look at Colorado on a, on a not great first half for Cordell Stewart, at least throwing the ball early. 306 total yards in the first half. That's tough to overcome when you roll up that type of yardage. 23.6 yards per catch for the Colorado receivers. That'll cure a few ills along the way. Colorado will have it first. Michael Westbrook from the one-yard line. And Westbrook in the open field. Nice return. Give him about 34 on the return. Michael and Cordell Westbrook Stewart the and line. Steve Stenstrom. There's how they compare through a half. Well, you can see one guy is going to do it for the short ball, and that only means the reason they're showing it with Stenstrom short is they're not confident in their protection. Cordell Stewart is going to throw long and short. He just has not been accurate throwing the short ball so far in this game. Both have had a couple of, inter well, one interception for uh, one and two for the other. First down, Colorado. And Lamont Warren, big hole. He got the touchdown late in the second quarter, and he got almost 10 yards there. We talked about the wide receivers. Very different approach. And you take a look at the two leading receivers tonight. You see the numbers are different, but Armour's getting it done in the end zone. Well, Armour is catching some pass. He had the big play on the long touchdown pass, but he's caught a lot of passes when he's almost lined up as a tight end. And look at that average for CJ. I mean, he, he's had a great first half. He trots out to the right side for Cordell Stewart on second down and less than a yard. Option left, and Cordell Stewart keeps it on the option and gets about six yards into Stanford territory. Knocked out of bounds by Swinton in the corner. Out of bounds by number eight, 20. So it's only taken a couple of plays for Colorado to reach into Stanford territory. Trailing 21-17. One of the things that you can tell a quarterback is calling plays to the line of scrimmage is the receivers signal to each other is which way the play is going. They're giving each other an idea which way the play is going. That time, one receiver was signaling, I don't know what the sign was exactly, that it was coming your way. At the 49 of the Cardinal, 
First and ten, Colorado on a blitz. Warren breaks it off on the right side. Well, I tell you, you can really see the improvements in the Colorado offensive line this year. Last year, they were kind of mush blockers. You know, when you put in a, a, a pass offense, the linemen subconsciously say, well, we're finesse guys now. All we have to do is pass block. This year, you know what they did? They off, off the shelf came the old sled, and they had to push that sled around this year, and those guys learned to drive block this year again. And they let their receivers go run track in the spring and said, we're going to spend about 80% of the time on the ground game anyway, and it seems to be paying off. Warren's got 72 yards now and 13 carries. Stewart all day to throw. Deep. Nice adjustment to the nine-yard line. It's Johnson again. Well, 34 more yards in front of the freshman, Swinton, who got turned around. Boy, there's a veteran on a freshman. Well, Charles Johnson, this is kind of a, a, a fade-type pass that is thrown. This ball is going to be thrown about 35 yards on the line. But watch Charles Johnson. He knows the ball is thrown under, thrown. He comes back, pushes him behind, and just makes the catch. What a beautiful play. And what a night for CJ. There's what he's done so far this year. Every game has been better than the one before. This time, Stanford's got the ground game snuffed out. And David Walker came up from the secondary to make the hit on Warren. I'll tell you what Cordell Stewart needs to do. He needs to come up to the line of scrimmage and use a couple of quick counts. Just snap the ball as soon as he gets up there because Stanford is stemming and moving very late in the snap count. People are starting to time up their blitzes, and that time the inside linebackers timed it up and kind of disrupted the play. He needs to just come up there, snap the ball, and catch him before they move. A loss of four. Second and goal, but it is way back now at the 13-yard line. Warren and Hill in the backfield together. The pass on a slant. Did he make the catch? Westbrook scraped that one off the turf. Wow. <laughs> Michael Westbrook getting in the act. He and Charles Johnson, extremely close friends, and they push each other to the limits. And boy, they are limitless, I think, in what they can do. As you can see, they run a slant inside an inside technique by the corner that time. And he just puts it in there. When you execute it, it doesn't matter how they line up. Colorado is not led tonight. They could change it if they can get it in on third and goal from the three-yard line. Warren didn't get there. Forward progress maybe got him inside the two, but that's it. Jason Fisk in the middle of that line made the first contact. And now does Coach McCartney go for the touchdown? He's sending it in with his second tight end. Here it comes again. They have picked up one fourth down conversion already tonight. This is a bigger one. All right, I'm going to let you make this call. Uh, option? <laughs> <laughs> right, I think Fred Von Appen's thinking that anyway. You, you were born at night, but not last night, <laughs> Exactly. Right? Warren, the tailback in an eye. Fourth and goal. On the option, Stewart, touchdown. You want to switch seats for a while? That's what I say. You get part of my paycheck now? <laughs> Colorado's in front. Awful tough the defensive team that can throw the ball as well at Co as Colorado can and then still have a quarterback that's about a 4-4, four, 4-5 four, four, guy and come out and hurt you on the option play. This time, he turns up inside, has too much speed for the inside linebackers, turns it in for an easy touchdown on fourth down. Berger. Snap handled well. And the kick is good. <laughs> Duke Tobin handled that snap, which is a little bit off. Got it down. Berger got it through. And for the first time tonight, the Buffaloes have rumbled in front. They lead by three. It's the round world. Genuine and true. It keeps on spinning. And you always come through. And you're giving it your best. Come to be a This is the office where our Ford truck engineers get a lot of work done. Because by knowing firsthand how a full-size pickup ought to work, they can make it work even better. That's why the Ford F-Series now has a new standard airbag, standard anti-lock brakes, and constant ideas to make tough even tougher. More proof that at Ford we're looking ahead and looking to stay ahead. Ford F-Series, the number one selling truck, is built Ford tough. 
You'd be so nice to come home to. You'd be so nice by the fire. You'd be so nice. You'd be paradise to come home to. Introducing Business Saver. Free faxes, movie, fitness center, and free local calls. And most Hiltons proudly offer AT&T long-distance service. Business Saver. ESPN's presentation of Pac-10 football is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Budweiser, fresh, pure, natural, proud to be your bud. Cordell Stewart for a touchdown. Things are working now, Rick Walker. Dwight went out for some cappuccino, I think. Get down to Rick after the kick. Berger set to knock it away to Mike Mitchell, Greg Camella. Mitchell, a yard in. Mitchell from the goal line. And Mike's got it out to the 24-yard line. Mike Mitchell with a 20 Pretty important now, you would think, for Stenstrom and Walsh to come up with something on this drive just to give an answer to Colorado. Yeah, even if they don't score, they need to take some clock off right now. They have to be a controlled offense, move the ball down the field, and if they have to punt it, they have to back them up at least inside the 25-yard line. They're forced to punt here three and out. It's going to be tough on their defense. Hey, on, on the other side, if Colorado can force a three and out right now, they can really win this football game here in the third quarter. First possession, third quarter for Stanford, and they'll blow this one dead as we had some illegal procedure. Looked like some motion on Stanford before the snap. Let's see if he got his mic on now. Dead ball, uh -huh. ball start on the offense. Repeat first down. All right, Pat, he finally hit the switch. All I think right. that was you know, it. he didn't even try before. I think he forgot to put it on his uniform. Colorado, Rick Walker has scored three times in the last four possessions they've had. Things are going well for him. Well, the key word is confidence. These guys know that their bread and butter is that option. They get inside the red area. If you look on the sidelines, these guys are just breaming right now with confidence. They want to go at Stanford, knock them out of the box, and secure the win. And Stanford didn't want to be in a first and 15 on their opening play offensively. Third quarter, and Stanford running for his life. Got it away. And he got the completion to Ethan Allen. Allen goes out near the original line of scrimmage, and Stenstrom's hurt. Yeah, well, Ted Johnson had a hold of him that time. Stenstrom, who came off the, the, the mat numerous times last season when he got hit and was sacked 46 times. This time, he moves out of the pocket. I think it's Ted Johnson is going to grab him, number 46. And number 93, Holland, and they just toss him down, and that's when you get your feet caught on. You'll see if they come in with the freshman, David. Uh, nope, they're Scott come Ross. in with Butterfield. Mark Butterfield's going to come in for the first time tonight. So we have seen now three quarterbacks. There's Butterfield, four out of six on the season. A 6'4 junior from here in California, and some pressure on him right now. They keep it on the ground. Roberts cuts it outside. Nice gain by Roberts across the 30 to the 31. Liamidi and Johnson combined on the hit. Stenstrom, they're working feverishly on what appears to be his ankle. Like Gary said, he was bounced around last year. Stanford quarterbacks were sacked together 58 times. 54 of them were Stenstrom's. And he was knocked woozy in more than one game. And you can tell he's hurting right now. And a big third down coming up for his offense without him. Uh, I'm not so sure if it is in his knee, too. They seem to be working a little higher than the ankle. Maybe, yeah. and Seems to be in a lot of pain. So a little pressure on Mark Butterfield in what might be his first throw of the night. And he got it complete. And who else? Justin Armour to the 50. Pretty cool for Butterfield. Pick up a 19. Well, when you come to Stanford, you better be able to throw the football no matter if you're first, second, or third string. But Armour, again, at the tight end position as a wide receiver, he's going to cross underneath. It's a picking type action with Klein, but Hudson that time just cannot keep up with him. And, you know, as we say, Hunt, our Armour is nothing more than maybe a 4-6, four, 4-7 four, receiver. Boy, he's using it well tonight. 
Five catches, 81 yards for Armour. And they go back to Tony Klein, and he's got his sixth catch of the night. Boy, Klein has been a major part of the offense for Stanford, and he's close to another first down, picked up close to nine. Ted Johnson again, the linebacker, made the hit. Most of the work Butterfield got last year was against Arizona and Washington. Threw 32 passes last year, completed 14, and as we said, four of six coming into this game. Short yardage offense in right now, and second down and a yard. And Roberts... Trying to bounce outside. Maybe he shouldn't have. He might have uh, been better to try to find a place to land around the 40 and lean forward. Instead, he's not going to get the first down. Wolfork made the tackle. Stenstrom trying to run it off on the sideline. Short of the first down. Well, this is a huge first down, a huge third down play. Stanford tried to run it right up the gut. Nothing fancy and could not pick it up. There was no push at all inside. and. Uh, it looks like they're a bit confused and may have to take a timeout. They are indeed taking a timeout. Coach Walsh will look at his chart. We'll find out if they can pick up the third down when we come back. If you're watching your money closely, you'll like what you see in the new Ford Escort. You'll like the fact that it's priced thousands less than the leading imports that it has a level of quality that helps bring it more repeat buyers than any other small car. And the fact that you can get any one of these highly equipped escorts for the same low price. Ford Escort. When it comes to quality and value, it's right on the money. What's new from Xerox? Xerox Extreme 450 Antifreeze and a new four-year guarantee. We've taken our promise to extremes. For the next four years or the next 50,000 miles, we guarantee the temperature never drops below Xerox. Pizza Hut has gone Hollywood. With a blockbuster Bigfoot movie deal. You get a coupon for one free movie rental at Blockbuster Video with any other movie rental. It's a blockbuster deal from Pizza Hut. Go ahead, make a wish. Then share it with your Allstate agent, who knows planning makes wishes come true, and who can outline a life insurance plan to assure family security and college funding and a comfy retirement are in the stars for you. So make your wish and trust it to your Allstate agent, who wants to be your agent for life. by three and a big third down coming up for Stanford. Let's check on the condition of Steve Stenson with Rick Walker. Rick? Greg Gary, right now it appears to be a mild strain of the right knee. Stenson ran up and down the sidelines, gave the indication to the trainers that he was feeling pretty good. Now he's made his way over to Bill Walsh. That's you guys. Mark Butterfield will give it off to Roberts and he got a first down. Nice opening right in the middle, and Ellery Roberts, the senior out of Avalon, New York, picked up a very critical first down, and here does come Steve Stenstrom, as Rick said, back into the Stanford huddle. You really don't expect a lot of big holes when you run third and in inches, but this was a nice hole, so you got to give credit to Kavanaugh and Bucky and, and Jarich that time. A little bit of cross action, and it appeared that Ted Johnson dove over expecting the tailback blast play and he kind of snuck underneath it first down of the 37 quick count stents from going deep first time back in and he's got a touchdown Stanford team and it just bit the Buffaloes for 37 yards. But Phil McCartney looks disgusted. The reason is because he said when Manny comes in, they send him deeper, they run a reverse. And you can see him talking to Mike Hankowitz. That just can't happen. They had the, the scouting report on it. They knew he was going to run deep and he ran right by Dalton Simmons. 27 24 extra point by Eric Abrams. And a snap that went awry and so did the two-point conversion attempt by Chris Berg the holder wow that makes it a three-point game instead of a four-point game a big missed extra point there but still Brian Manning the freshman has put the Cardinal back on top 
It happens once a year, the time when the best come along at the best price of the year. This year, the best are at Burt Nissan. Nissan Altima, a whole new kind of luxury car. The hottest selling car in America, Nissan Maxima. And get this, Nissan Pathfinder at $219 a month, just in time for the Colorado winter. When Burt says closeout, we mean it. These Altimas, Maximas, and Pathfinders won't last long at these prices. So don't miss this one. Burt Nissan, 54 years and still the Rocky Mountain leader. Hi, I'm Jake Jabs. Simmons has teamed up with American Furniture Warehouse to give you fast, on-time, guaranteed delivery on any Simmons mattress or box spring. We're one of the nation's largest Simmons dealers, and we guarantee you the lowest prices. And now, for a limited time, you can get any Simmons Goody Rest mattress, like the Luxury Firm, Ultra Premium Extra Firm, or the World Class Goody Rest, and get an extra 10% off of our already guaranteed lowest prices. And we guarantee fast, on-time delivery. As the season winds down, the pennant chase heats up on ESPN. They pulled off one of the greatest comebacks in Major League history. Now the Braves try to keep it up as they face the Mets tomorrow live on America's Game of the Week, ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. Freshman Brian Manning with the biggest play of his early collegiate career. 37-yard touchdown strike from Steve Stenstrom. And Stanford back in front. Botched extra point, but they still lead by three, 27-24. Great football game. A lot of great execution in this football game by a lot of players. Here's the kick to Michael Westbrook yards deep and he will not be able to bring it out they've done a nice job this deep kickoff Brad this is just a streak top of your screen right there Manny's going to go deep Dalton Simmons should have known that this was the play that this young freshman was in for it was in their scouting report but what a nice job Simmons does to get watch when we take a little closer look he gets his hand on that ball and look at the concentration we talked about Cordell Stewart early in this game and the great execution on the option that's great concentration, and Stenstrom puts another one on the board. Three touchdown passes tonight for Steve. Having another gigantic game. He had a big game with four touchdown passes against San Jose State last week. Here's his counterpart, Cordell Stewart, going to work and getting it to Charles Johnson for about nine more. Jeez. Charles Johnson might catch 15 passes before this game's over at the rate he's going. You know, we, we were talking in the break, Brad, that, you know, what do you do if they don't make that third and short? And I said, I go forward on fourth because I don't have much confidence that my defense is ever going to stop Colorado's offense again unless they make a mistake themselves. They're just too powerful on offense. Charles Johnson, nine catches, uh, seven catches rather, 166 yards. And again, he's not hurting that average of his that was over 21 coming in and over 23 here tonight. Here's the option to the short side, and Stewart's got a first down and quite a bit more out near the 40-yard line. Toby Norwood knocked him out of bounds, but Cordell got 11 on that run. Yeah, I think we're looking at a track meet the rest of this football game. Neither defense is going to be able to stop uh, the, pat the other team's offense. If you love offense, don't go away. We've got 7.58 left in this quarter and a fourth quarter yet to come. 27-24. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Rick Walker with you. Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto on a gorgeous night, and it's going up and down the field in both directions. First down. Buffaloes, their own quarter. Stewart set to go to work again, and that time Johnson, the closest man, but he didn't come quite as far across the field as Stewart was hoping for. Let's go to Rick Walker, Rick. Thanks, guys. Stanley Scott, the trainer for the Cardinal, gave us a good indication that it was a bruise, not a strain, no ligament damage whatsoever. Simpson right now is on the phone talking upstairs, getting a game plan for his next series. Hoping to pull out a win. He's only four wins short of the most victories ever by a Stanford quarterback. There's a guy named Plunkett who won 22 games in a red and white uniform. And Steve trying to pick up another victory tonight. Still a long way to go. Second down at 10, Colorado. Again, on the option, Stewart keeps. 
know, Brad, the option is going to be there all day, but I think Stanford would be happy to have Cordell Stewart run the option rather than throw it up to those two wide receivers. And the other thing I worry about Colorado running a lot of option is the fact that Coy Dittmer, who is the second best quarterback on this Colorado football team, is being redshirted this year. If Cordell Stewart goes down, they have capable backups, but let's be honest, their second best quarterback isn't even on the trip. Vance Joseph would be the guy if something were to happen to Cordell Stewart, but as Gary said, Detmer's not even here, and they don't want to use him until next year. Third and five. Yeah, I think, I think uh, Bill McCartney told Michael Weisbrook that time to call timeout. The time, the, the clock uh, was down to four seconds, and they would have never got that play off, and Westbrook was standing right next to McCartney and turned around and signaled the timeout. 7-12 remaining in the third quarter. Bill Walsh with the lead. And, and, and in this type of a game, in an offensive type game, both teams have had to burn a timeout already in this half, and those could be huge coming down in those last two or three minutes, you know, like go one or two o'clock in the morning whenever, you know, this game <laughs> gets over the way they're going. Well, there's a guy that won a lot of games in the NFL. Speaking of the NFL, Sunday at noontime. It's not that far away now. Award-winning NFL Sunday preview. Chris Berman, Joe Theismann, Tom Jackson, and Mort. The whole gang will be there. And then tomorrow night, NFL primetime. As Chris Berman, Robin Roberts, Tom Jackson, and the gang will bring you all the highlights and statistics and analysis of the day's NFL action. That's game day in primetime tomorrow right here on ESPN. 27-24, and as we said, we talked about it a couple of times, Bill McCartney now the quarterback coach as well as head coach for uh, the Colorado Buffaloes, and he did a little work uh, in the NFL in the offseason himself to try to prep himself for that particular responsibility. Yeah, he visited the Chicago Bears and, and, and talked with their staff. He, his son works as a scout with the yeah, Bears Mike's and uh, was, uh, was able to go and, and do some visiting and, and, and just talk basics and fundamentals. He said it was fun being a student and being back in the thick of it. He's in the thick of it right now, trailing by three with a third and five. Buffalo's 50% of the night on third down conversions. They've got another one. First down, who else? Charles Johnson. Wow, you don't think he has an arm? Running to his left that time, he just rips that ball across his body and, and puts a perfect throw low to Johnson, and he just grabs it, and uh, you know anything close to that guy, he catches. Charles Johnson uh, has been talked about, of course, a very, very tough childhood and has come up and become quite a young man. He is something to be around and graduated in three years in marketing and uh, hopes to put that to use when football is over. But I got a feeling there's a lot more football after he takes off that gold helmet. He'll have another one on someplace. He's got eight catches tonight. Wide open is the tight end. Poirier, and he rumbles down on the 20-yard line. Christian's been quiet tonight as far as receiving, and he goes 29 yards there. Well, that's an out-and-out -out bust. They had a blitz on, and one of the linebackers did not peel with the hot receiver on that play. Looking at it from the other side of the field, Poirier is going to step back, invite the blitz, and then sucker him and let him go by. And this was a play all the way, probably was an audible when they saw the blitz look happen. Whoever has that tight end has to lock him up. He's man-to-man. -man. You can't go across away from your man and chase the quarterback. Right back to the 20-yard line and close to that red zone again. Colorado trailing by three. Lamont Warren, big hole left side. Broken tackle, first down. Close to a touchdown. He's down to the one-yard line. Warren, who saw Salam, the youngster, take 121 yards for a score in the first half, and he almost did the same thing right there. Well, Lamont Warren has really improved. He took a lot of knock blocks last year as being one of the reasons they did not have a great running game. They didn't have a lot of, of blocking that time. Looking at Michael Westbrook, to run the ball outside, you have to have receivers that want to go downfield and not just kick Ooh. the ball. Did he lay one on the safety that time? Did he ever. Woo. And it almost sprung his tailback for a touchdown. Down close, first and goal at the one. The give straight ahead, flags down. This would be a touchdown if the penalty doesn't take it away. We're going to hold on here. Let's see if it's against Colorado. Offsides on the defense. It's against Stanford, touchdown Buffalo.
Well, this has turned into a mini basketball game right now. Both teams are coming down using the 24-second clock, shooting and putting it in the end zone, and uh, coming right at you. Salam's got a second of the night. Oh, is that pretty? Three guys hitting him at the same time, and he falls forward. The sign of a great running back. Extra point coming up. Berger has got it up and in. <laughs> we might be here all night, but we'll have fun doing it. 5.54 left in the third quarter. It is 31 to 27, Colorado back in front. Man, and these drives aren't getting any shorter. All these drives seem like they've been between 70 and 80 yards. Well, it's a, it, it, it's a good thing that uh, Cordell Stewart has, uh, I think, turned his game around with the option play. And when the option started working for him, he relaxed and started throwing the ball well. He's mixed it up now after throwing to his tight end Fourier for the first time tonight. Remember, Cordell started off on an, on an 0 for. He was, what, at one point 0 for 6 tonight and finally got a completion, and now has warmed things up. 80-yard drive again. Eight plays, 80 yards, 249. You know, and as we talked, Brad, it, it, it really seems now that no matter where Colorado gets the football, they're going to score. If I was Bill Walsh, unless it was more than three yards on fourth down, I might think Go about going it. for it anyway. I'd make it a four-down game the rest of the game and see if I could outscore them. Maybe you'll end up with the ball last. That's what you hope for, I think. Mitchell and Camella back deep. Berger to kick. High and short this time. Mitchell really got a hustle to get to it at the 14-yard line. Finds a little alley and got out to the 34. Was it Berger that made the hit? Yeah, it was. It really was. He paid the price. It's a good thing he did, though, because Mitchell had a head of steam that time, and maybe one guy left after Berger, or he'd have been gone. Yeah, he, he's a little woozy, because he came flying in there and got hit. looked like the knee right in the back of his neck or leg. You can see the big hole. Berger just kind of sells out. And you can see his head hit the right knee for Mitchell. Coming from the right side, he dives. Very great play, very good play with him. And uh, I'll bet you he's a little woozy. The 35-yard line, first down, Stanford. They go with a quick draw. And Camella gets about three. Shannon Clavel, the nose man, he's on the tackle. Never called his name much, but he's an outstanding football player. Came in last year when Jeff Bruner got hurt with the bad knee. and. Really, in the future, as we looked at Bruner, and now we have Clavel, he, he could play nose tackle or maybe even move out to defensive end. You saw Berger on the sideline. They were holding up the fingers, saying, how many am I yeah, holding up, son? He said three, and they said, well, you're good enough to go back right. in. That was obviously one finger being held I up. I think if he tries another field goal, they're going to have to tell him which set of goal posts <laughs> to aim at. That's what the folks thought about after the bowl game last year. He had a terrible Fiesta Bowl, went one for three on extra points and missed a short 23-yard field goal that conceivably could have won that game for him. He has put that behind him. And I'm sure he's not thinking about that right now. But I like kickers to stick their nose in like that. Good stop. Second down and six upcoming. Five and a half minutes left third quarter. If you're just joining us, Stanford trailing Colorado, 31-27. Stanford led much of the game, but Colorado now has led twice this quarter. Stenstrom leveled by Clavel. We just called his name a moment ago. Gary said he could maybe move outside and be a defensive end. He was every place that time. He moved inside Stenstrom's helmet that time. <laughs> because... He just came. I'm not sure Stenstrom got rid of this one because Clavel got in there as fast as you can get. It was only a three-step drop, and he just leveled them. A little bit of a stunt. Stenstrom is setting up to throw the football. Mm. And, yes, his arm did come forward. That's a very good call. Shannon Clavel spent uh, a short stint in the Marines right out of high school. Boy, he just called Reveille on Stenstrom's <laughs> back on that baby. Third down and six. Deep drop this time. Across the middle. I don't think Armour got the first down. Great tackle by Ted Johnson that time. Armour tried to come across the momentum of the play and beat Johnson, and Johnson stuck out his right hand and tripped him up. Well, as Gary said, anything 
fourth down and short go for but not in this spot on the field well don't be so sure I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't fake one here nice kick Johnson all the way back to the nine and they're gonna bring him down at about the 15 ball popped loose at the end but blown dead 47 yard punt as Aaron Mills has done a nice job on the kicks tonight. Six-yard return for Charles. Good news is you had a good punt with great coverage. Bad news is you let the team go 80 yards last time your defense <laughs> was out there. Well, they need a big stop. Yep, I mean, they do. It's, uh, you know, they need to depend on a, a little bit of what Colorado was doing early, and that was making some mistakes and self-destructing. And if Stewart is on, I, I don't know if he can stop this offense. Well, Stanford allowed Washington 500 yards in the opener. 593 they gave up to San Jose State last week. And now the Colorado Buffaloes are getting them in big chunks. Salam again. And Ian Warren may both end up with a 100-yard night as Rashawn got nine on that carry. That gives him 71 on the night on 12 pops. So both running backs. That running game that we talked about, the, the Buffaloes worked so hard on in spring practice, and it's showing here. Absolutely. We did them last year against Nebraska when they, they just could not get back to the line of scrimmage. They had too many wide receivers in the game. McCartney, again, did a good job of saying, hey, one nine games, but we've got to get better. We have to change again. We got tougher and more physical with these guys. It's going to pay off for them. Second down, a yard. Salam has the first down. Out to the 28-yard line. You talk about Bill McCartney, and here's a guy who has not been afraid to entirely change his offensive philosophy three times in the last decade. I mean, you start changing offenses three times in 10 years, you're not afraid to do things. Well, you know, there's a saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But there's also some people that believe if it ain't broke, you're not looking hard enough. And Bill <laughs> McCartney's saying to be great, to play the schedule we have in 93 and coming in 94 when you have Act Texas in an opener, we have to get better throwing the ball in modern-day football talked about the 500 yard games given up by Stanford already twice this year in Colorado as you can see closing in on that magic mark Vaughn Bryant makes the stop on Stewart of the keeper 320 left third quarter 31 27 Colorado and there's what's happened in the first two weeks Colorado can do it to you on offense and Stanford can give it to you a couple of times in a row. And I'll tell you right now, they'll be happy to hold them to 500 yards this game. It's going to be more like 600. They, they hope it's 500 maybe at the yeah. end of three quarters. 599 would be a good, good defensive stand for them. I, I'll tell you what they have them set up for right now. They could play action pass and just have somebody trotting down the middle of the field. You mean maybe like Charles Johnson or Michael Westbrook? Well, I, I'd choose one of those two guys because <laughs> even if they're covered by two guys, the odds are in your favor. But now the safeties are starting to come up and try to make the play on the option football. They could make a nice play action pass and, and, and maybe put the game away. I don't think they'll do that. I think they'll run for the first down. But I, I tell you, the play action pass is now there. Third down a yard. Both Hill and Salam in the backfield. Salam, the second man through, has the first down. Out to the 41 yard line. Pete Swanson got him off his pins, but not before he picks up the first down. A gain of two on first down. Well, Salam is the real deal. I'll tell you, he he looks like he can run inside. He's got great speed and, and, and great size at 210 pounds. And, uh, you know, with Lamont Warren, he, he looks much better this year, too. They've got great tailbacks in this football team. First and 10, Colorado's Buffaloes with two minutes left, third quarter. Nice play fake. Stewart, there's the play action. Deep ball. Westbrook couldn't find the handle. See, I would have gone to Johnson, though. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. That was there. I mean, you're just sitting up here. It is really easy to call plays if I don't have to throw them, you know, <laughs> because the safeties were just coming up so quickly. quickly. Or Elliot Uzlak is wired to our, our, to our press box right two. now. Because he's just running up, and Westbrook knows he has a touchdown and just drops it. And Michael's, you know, now he's, Michael's not going to drop those very often, that's for sure. Boy, that, that, that changes and maybe puts the game out of reach for Stanford. Second down of 10. This time they keep it on the ground. They've got about five. Salam 
with the catch. You know, I, I, what I'll bet is I'll bet Bill Walsh is on the other side saying the same thing. Watch out, they're going to come with that play action pass any second, and, and they do it, and they had a huge play. You know, I, I feel sometimes like Bill Walsh was that guy that is the chess genius, only he's got one of those computer games that only goes up to level two, and he wants to go to level nine, and he yeah. can't get there yet. The team is young. He'll get there. Third down and six. Stewart's numbers. And a big, big play upcoming for the young Stanford defense here. Stewart running for his life. Got a man open. Drops. It was. They're going to have a flag. Wait a minute. Fourier trying to make the catch, and they're going to call interference. Yeah, they're going to call face guarding. On Garnett. Yep. Fourier still should have caught the ball, and I'm sure he's upset with himself since he has that 10-yard fire throw that he and Johnson throw the ball, or Westbrook throw the ball against him. He, this was relatively an easy catch for him, and uh, the ball, he's there waiting. When Cordell Stewart breaks the pocket, he is very dangerous. You see at the top of your screen, he's wide open. Garnett's gets hit just a little bit. He sticks his hand in there, and then you can see he was upset, but really that would have been a good catch. Of course, a pass interference, not at the spot, but uh, which would have been around the 25, but a 15-yard penalty walked off to the 40, and a first down, Colorado. They've got the lead with 102 left third quarter, 31-27. Blitz coming. And Salam ran right by the blitz and picked up close to six yards. David Walker made the tackle. I'll tell you, Heath Irwin, number 63 that time, the left guard, who they really have high hopes of uh, being a great football player. It did a nice job of picking up that blitz, and, and that's what we talk about, though, Brad, about changing up the snap count. These linebackers are timing up the snap count right now. Irwin steps inside, stones them, might grab them a little bit, too, but that's what you got to get away with, and uh, does a beautiful job of making the play go. Second down long for Stewart on the keeper. Nice spin move to pick up the first down of the 26-yard line. Sunday night, we've got baseball coming up on ESPN. It's America's Game of the Week. Fred McGriff leads the Braves in one of the most amazing stories in Major League history. What a comeback in the last six weeks or so from 10 back to three up right now. Mets and the Braves. That's tomorrow night at 8 right here on ESPN. And I am, of course, a Braves fan. Well, I was wondering why you were reading that smiling. So <laughs> There's not a person in Atlanta right now who's not a Braves fan as the third quarter is going to come to a close at Stanford Stadium. Hold up four fingers. Still a fourth quarter yet to come. Walk it to the other end. We played three in Palo Alto. And we got an offensive match going for you with the Buffaloes leading by four. Tonight's ladies' night, and there's a special on Bud Light. Oh, really? If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Oh, no, it's Ted from accounting. Mother Nature sets up the shop. Oh, she got all of that one. True Test paint is made to withstand the worst weather. There's another fine play including golf ball-sized hail. She can do no wrong. Remember, when it comes to the weather, Mother Nature never yells for. True Test Paints, only at true value. Select Weatherall Paints are now specially priced during the fall paint sale at participating stores. You know, it just sort of happened. One day I spotted some gray, and then I saw a wrinkle or two, and, and I started thinking, I don't know, maybe I was losing it. Maybe the best years were behind me. Then one day it dawned on me. I was beginning to look like my dad. I can live with that. Can't. Clothes for the man comfortable in his own skin. 
With its cool new look and refreshing new lines, the new Ford Ranger Splash is the first and only compact flare side. The 1993 Ford Ranger Splash. Start making some waves. Imagine what it's like to be a cop. You get out of here! What it does to your marriage. It would be easier on both of us if we made a clean break. What it does to your partner. Just get away from me, Kelly. What it does to your heart. So what do we do now? It depends on you. What it does to your head. This is for Giadella shooting a cop. You're gonna give this up, huh? He whacked my partner, and I want him. See what it's all about. NYPD Blue. Coming this fall to ABC. Viewer discretion advised. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Rick Walker with you as we start the fourth quarter. That's not any of us. <laughs> no, but he might be in on defense if they don't stop pretty soon. They could use a tree out there against Colorado. 31-27 as we start the fourth quarter. Colorado, an 80-yard touchdown march the last time they had it to regain the lead, and now they've worked it down to the 26-yard line of Stanford. Salam got in the open field and got all the way to the 11-yard line. 15 yards for Rashan Salam, the sophomore out of San Diego. And again, he's closing in on, well, he's got 100 now. 20 carries, 106 yards. Left side of your screen, you'll see uh, Hill make a good block on the free safety. But watch Salam just keep his legs moving as he gets hit. He just keeps running, spinning, turning, and falling forward. A lot of great backs earn a lot of money in the NFL by falling forward. To the 11-yard line, first down. First man this time, Hill, got about two. It's number 33, James Hill. Aaron Parker in on the tackle. He's met by number 60, Tyrone Parker. Hill's been a little more quiet than the other two guys tonight. Lamont Warren and Salam have done most of the work in the backfield. That time he got it to the nine-yard line. Second down and seven. Second and seven. A little bit of a disparity there on the rushing yards. Wow. This is three games in a row that Colorado's had more than 200 yards, both rushing and passing in the same game. Three straight weekends they've done that. They hadn't done it that many times in Bill McCartney's previous 11 years. So they have really mixed up the offense. David Walker, number 20. We have it at the three-yard line of Stanford with 13.40 left in a four-point lead. Five yards Admittedly, the they're not playing a great defense Third tonight. The but they do show the that they have a balanced attack, unlike last year where they had to depend with the three wide receivers and just one tight end. They're able to run it, balance both ways, and it'll help them. Westbrook, the lone wideout. Salam. Stop for no gain. It's fourth down. Coy Gibbs made the tackle. Well, you know, a field goal gives them a seven-point lead, but I, I think the way that their offense is going, they, they just might as well go for it. What kind of play do you think here? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just grab so, uh, someone from the stands and ask them what kind of play they're going to run here. Something like maybe a, a an option? It'll be a dive option, one way or the other. Fourth down, almost three. Here it comes. Dive there option. it goes. Touchdown! <laughs> <laughs> kind of takes the fun out of it, you know? It's like... When I used to watch you do those old U.S. World games, they used to, you used to hear the coach call the play in those days. <laughs> Coming right at you, going to our right uh, screen right here, fakes the dive option, turns it. Remember, this guy can run 4-4. I'll bet you the linebacker doesn't turn around this time and come and help. Just goes into the end zone. And... Oh, they back to the point they missed. That yeah, that still have some bearing. 10-point ten ten game. Point game. You know, Stanford's not done on offense. Right now, they're going to need some offense, so they trail by 10. My dandruff shampoo is good. Better try something else. Mine really works. 
You'd better try something else, like Selsun Blue. Doctors recommend it more than all leading brands. Selsun Blue, doctor recommended number one. Way back in 1947, cowboys designed Wrangler cowboy cut jeans to be comfortable in the saddle. Or out of it. Wrangler, the Western original. It's been our observation that where there's a popular car, there's a lease. And where there's a lease, there's one of these. And, well, here's ours, accompanied by the Fillmore String Quartet. Who, by the way, would all fit very comfortably inside the Isuzu Trooper. Seeing how it's probably the most spacious four-wheel drive around. Why, they could probably even add another member if they wanted to. Maybe not. The Isuzu Trooper and the Trooper Lease. Practically amazing. Driver, do you have any Bud Light in your vehicle? Yes. And I am Mr. Gally Weekich. You mean Dr. Kalakowitz? Yes, I am. This is so cool. First time in a limo? Doctor? In a limo this small. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. ESPN's presentation of Pac-10 football is brought to you by Isuzu, makers of incredible four-wheel drives. The last drive, 84 yards, 15 plays, almost seven minutes, and the missed extra point keeps Stanford in the game, but they trail by 10. Well, you think I'm kidding. I'd go on four downs every time. If unless it's more than five yards, and I'd go onside kick, too, because it doesn't matter where Colorado gets the ball, they're going to score. Ryan Mitchell's been close to breaking a couple tonight. The freshman takes this one, and he's not breaking anything except his stride. <laughs> T.J. Cunningham on the special teams. So just what Stanford didn't want was bad field position, and that's what they end up with at about the 14-yard line. Mitchell did not stay with the hole that time. He tried to make a big play on his own. He didn't stay with the way the return was set up, and he paid for it. So Steve Stenstrom, who's already thrown three touchdown passes tonight, is 86 yards away from trying to close the gap on this game, which has 12.35 remaining. Play action over the middle, climb the tight end, 11 yards, maybe 12. They've done that all night long. Let's go down to Rick Walker. Rick? Brad Gary, it's interesting. Uh, Steve Simpson got the offense all together. They started to reflect back to last year's Notre Dame victory. Uh, they needed a couple of scores to win, and they got it. So let's see if the action takes place. Back to you guys. Notre Dame was ranked fourth in the country last year when they traveled into South Bend, and they put a pretty good licking on the Irish. Colorado came into this one eight and 20th ranked Stanford now a little bit behind the eight ball trailing by 10 points. Stenstrom in trouble. The middle and Klein got another one. 15 more yards. Tony Klein has 100 yards receiving. He's got eight catches on the night. Funny, we talked to the offensive coordinator, Terry Shea, who said what we don't want Sensum to do is move around and throw off rhythm. He, we want him to throw on rhythm. When he scrambles, he doesn't do a great job of it. But tonight, Stenstrom has done a nice job of throwing after he's been flushed from the pocket. First down, Stanford. Stenstrom faked it across. The middle he goes to Klein. He faked the swing pass and goes right back to Klein. Tony Klein again from Steve Stanford. And Tony has got hit by number 21, Dwayne Davis. It was actually they faked a little more Brad than the swing pass. They faked a wide screen, and you're going to see the tight end right here. He's going to fall down, and the linemen are going to pull, and the back's going to come out here, and then he'll free up. Tight end goes down. Linemen come up faking a screen, and then he'll just take that vacated area. It's kind of a long handoff. Very nice developed play. Olsen and Roberts dual backfield behind Stenstrom. Now they're going to shift to an eye. And out of it immediately. Stenstrom changing things up. Roberts behind Nate Olsen. Got only about a yard. Nate Olsen, we talk about Coy Gibbs That's being Joe's son. Nate Olsen, Merlin Olsen's son, who's a lead man, a fullback in short yardage. And... 
Merlin's at the ball game tonight as well. Here's a good look at Nate. There's Merlin. A gain of one. I think he knows that uh, this offense has to score some points. That's what he'd be saying right now. It's like Merlin's brother right over his right-hand shoulder there, too. <laughs> Third down. Stenstrom in trouble. And he got it complete. And it's Klein again. Like father, like son. Uh, Tony Klein's having a career night. Ten catches. We talked about his dad being a former pro football player. Like father, like son. There's uh, another duo. We talked about the Olsons. Here's the Kleins. <laughs> the Criders. The Garnets. The Gibbs. The Harper. We got a couple of pages of this stuff. Masters and Olson and Shaw and Charlie Young, who was a heck of a tight end, and his son's a backup defensive back. So there is a lot of NFL lineage, if you will, in the teams here tonight, especially for Stanford. First down. This one's not over by any means. Ten minutes left. Stanford down ten. And across the middle, Justin Armour to the 30. First down, a pickup of 14. And boy, this is an impressive looking drive and talk about mixing it up on offense. Well, you know, the whole way that time he's pitching, he's pushing on Enriquez right here, number 55. He pushes, pushes, they fight, but the great timing on the slant, and watch how well this ball is thrown. That's pretty good coverage, but Armour used his size that time to really shield the smaller corner. And Justin's got 99 yards receiving, so Klein with over 100, Armour with 99 and two touchdowns. First down again, Stanford. Nine forty. He's expecting the blitz, and he's audible into something. And he got it. And down he goes. Ted Johnson. I don't think he audible into the sack, but I know he knew that the blitz was coming. Uh, Colorado tried to disguise it, but it was evident that they were coming on that play. It's very frustrating when you know and you work at things, and you know the linebackers are going to come. Look at six men come inside. Johnson just unblocked and, uh, well, he was actually accounted for, but did not do a good job. Bucky just did not make the block. So the Midwest surfer with a big hit there and an eight-yard loss. Eight tackles for Ted Johnson on the night. Second down of 18. Tough spot here for Stenstrom. Buys himself some time. Lost one intended for Klein incomplete. And the heat was coming from John Canoots and the other inside linebacker, the junior out of Great Falls, Montana. He's had a nice night as well. I don't want to say Klein's been getting a lot of passes, but our spotter hasn't taken his finger off Klein's <laughs> name for this whole drive. <laughs> Third and about 20, and I, I, I'll bet you that if they pick up more than 10 yards here, they're going to go for it on fourth down. 8.45, left in the game. Justin Armour's been Steve Stenstrom's favorite target when he needed bigger chunks of yardage. He needs a big chunk here. He already has 283, but he needs 18 more. Stenstrom steps up in the pocket. Deep middle. Intended, it appeared, for either Armour or Harris. They were both in the vicinity. Lindsey broke it up. Might have been Mark Harris that time. They were both crossing. Yeah, I think he was throwing for Harris that time, coming across from the left side to the right. From the from behind, you're going to see he's going to throw. Well, actually, I think he was throwing to Armour. I bet he didn't even see Harris, and it's a good thing Harris tipped it, or that ball would have been intercepted. Well, he's going for things on fourth down, and then there's fourth down and 18. Yeah, you just can't go for it now. You got to punt. You got to get a stop sometime in this game, or you're not going to be able to win it. Aaron Mills to punt. Try to pin Charles Johnson back deep to the kind of line drive it to the near side. Oh, oh just missed. Just inside the cone, the pylon over there. And, uh, that's going to be a touchback. They don't gain much on that punt. 8.33 left. Colorado in command by 10. State Farm presents the rules of the game. We're talking about intentional grounding. In this play, the quarterback purposely grounds the pass to avoid loss of yardage. What is the penalty? Today, a woman needs a life insurance plan of her own. State Farm sells life insurance from an agent who's there for you today and there tomorrow, too. You see, we start you outright with a plan specifically designed for a woman's needs, one that protects the people who count on you for so very much. 
And the State Farm agent will be there tomorrow, too, as your life changes, to keep that plan working for the people you love. State Farm sells life insurance. We're talking about intentional grounding. In this play, the quarterback grounds the pass to avoid loss of yardage. This is a five-yard penalty from the spot of the pass and loss of down. Rules of the game has been brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Okay, pull away from the curb and take a left at the end of the block. Yes, sir. Is this a new trooper? Uh, yes, sir. It's my mom's. Tell you what, take a right instead. Yes, sir. If ever there was an excuse for driving a little bit out of your way, this is it. Very nice. Wait, I didn't get to parallel park. You're right. The Isuzu Trooper, practically amazing. Very nice. With Gary Danielson and Rick Walker, Brad Nessler with you. Stanford Stadium, we got a real defensive battle going here. <laughs> 8.33 left. Colorado with a ball back and a 10-point lead. First tackle and almost got six. Garnett and Gibbs finally put him down. So Lamont Warren, he and Salam have both had excellent nights on the ground. Six yards on the with no, I'm sorry, Brad. Number 63 is kind of a down down, and the guard is going to kick out on the outside. And uh, Keith Irwin did a good job of opening up that hole. The way they've got these guards lined up all that, I'm surprised they haven't had a penalty call for not having seven men on the line of scrimmage at some time or another. Warren right side this time, and he got head-to-head -head with Gibbs and Parker, and he lost that one. Thursday night, don't forget, CFA Thursday night. Join us, 8.40 for the weekend kickoff, followed by... Pookie Jones and Kentucky's Wildcats, uh, Bill Curry, against Steve Tannehill and his ponytail, the Gamecocks of South Carolina. Thursday night on ESPN. Cordell Stewart with a third down and three, and Stanford absolutely has to have a stop here. Gets a first down and then some. Out of bounds. That will put him over 100 yards on the night. And the defense of the Cardinal well aware that they had to bring down number 12 and didn't get the job done. Well, they got a big first down, but no thanks to Michael Westbrook on this play because he saw that time clock going down. And watch. He's going to look at the referee. He's already done this once. He's going to signal timeout. Oh, timeout, timeout. And he was wrong. They got the play off the other way. And... Uh, it's a good thing he didn't get the signal in. First and 10 for the Buffaloes. First down, Colorado. Seven minutes, two seconds to play. They're up 10. And Warren rips off about eight more to the 45-yard line. Batson, the linebacker, made the tackle. Brought down by number 42, Brian Batson. Those early turnovers by Colorado in the first half gave Stanford what it needed, and that was the early lead. But in this second half, Colorado has stampeded out here, and they have done just about everything right. I'll tell you, this is going to be a, a time in a game when Bill McCartney is going to show his football team that a tough spring practice and fall practice is going to pay off. They're going to run the ball and prove to themselves and their team and their fans that they can run the ball. Short of the first down. By a yard, third down and one coming up. So they continue to force him into third down situations, but unless you stop him on one of these, yeah. it isn't going to matter. Yeah, the, the only problem is, and I, it's it's kind of easy to read the coach's lips when you see the play run ten times, but you saw him just say option as he called the play, and he always got the ace, he got the wild card in the hole all the time and being able to call the option play. It's going to be dive option. On a third and two. Man, is it going to be close because the spot he gets is a fairly good one, I think, if you're a Colorado fan. Should have been dive option. <laughs> Coming in, 
Lion have done a good job coming more line blocking. You see the guards they're going to read, come around and hit the pile that time. Lamont Warren takes it up inside, and this time he's knocked backwards. And a good job tackling by that Stanford linebacker. I thought the officials were fairly gracious on the spot, but after seeing the replay, they put it down exactly where he got hit. And now the measurement upcoming. Short by a couple inches, what do you think? Yep. Uh, more than inches, about 12 of them, maybe 15. Boy, it's a tough call. It's a tough call whether you go for it. I think you punch. punch. Yeah, they got a punch. So Stanford in desperate need of a third down stop, and they finally got one with 5.39 left, so still not over. Yeah, they, they didn't, didn't call the option, so they gave him a chance. That's right. Leroy Pruitt back, freshman. Who knows that he does not want to make a mistake in this situation. Meanwhile, Stanford setting up nine guys on the defensive front as though they may try to bring some heat on Berger. Remember, Berger was woozy earlier in the game after making a tackle on a kickoff. We're going to have to watch this snap in. Yeah, they're going to take the delay. They're going to take the delay. Team will come over. The only problem, yeah, it was a good move because they saw what Stanford was going to do. Now they can come back to the sidelines, go over the blocking type of scheme, and uh, set it up, and everybody's on the same page. The problem is now if Stanford jumps offside, they still won't get the first down. High snap, but he got it down and got the kick away. Dual safeties back there, and they're going to try a little razzle-dazzle, a pass over to Pruitt. Nice tackle, or Pruitt may have been off to the races. That was number 22, Ozzy Granardo making the catch. Kenny Wilkins on the special Throwing team says, no, you're not going to get away with that one. Leroy Pruitt. you got to love it, huh? <laughs> well, I tell you, it was as close as it could have came. I wonder if Joe Gibbs brought that play with him. That's one the Washington Redskins used Desmond to run Howard. all the time. Yeah. They got a touchdown out of this last year, did the Redskins Darryl, watch this play? Daryl Green, Desmond Howard, they throw it back. And the block right here on the outside was the key block. They did not get number 20, Kenny Wilkins. If they'd have blocked him, they would have gone for maybe 20, 30 more yards. Kenny made a shoestring stop with 4.59 left, but Stanford down 10 as their offense on the field when we come back. It happens once a year, the time when the best come along at the best price of the year. This year, the best are at Burt Nissan. Nissan Altima, a whole new kind of luxury car. The hottest selling car in America, Nissan Maxima. And get this, Nissan Pathfinder at $219 a month, just in time for the Colorado winter. When Burt says closeout, we mean it. These Altimas, Maximas, and Pathfinders won't last long at these prices. So don't miss this one. Burt Nissan, 54 years and still the Rocky Mountain leader. Hi, I'm Jake Dabb. Simmons has teamed up with American Furniture Warehouse to give you fast, on-time, guaranteed delivery on any Simmons mattress or box spring. We're one of the nation's largest Simmons dealers, and we guarantee you the lowest prices. And now, for a limited time, you can get any Simmons Goody Rest mattress, like the Luxury Firm, Ultra Premium Extra Firm, or the World Class Goody Rest, and get an extra 10% off of our already guaranteed lowest prices. And we guarantee fast, on-time delivery. ESPN2, coming October 1. I'm Chris Berman. Join us Sunday at noon Eastern time on NFL Game Day. Emmett is back in the Dallas saddle. New Orleans, known for its defense, now has a juggernaut offense. What's happened? And rookie against rookie. It'll be Drew Bledsoe against Rick Meyer. Join us. 4.59 to go, trailing by 10, and now Stanford's got to pull out all the stops, Gary. Well, they're in four-down territory right now, at least four-down time. They will do everything. First pass incomplete, and Woolfork almost had himself another sack. Yeah, Ronnie Woolfork, he does not that get close. there. <laughs> the, the, the great thing about the great players is, and, and Ronnie Woolfork is, and, is, and will be in the pros, is they might not get there all day, but they keep coming all day, and that's what he does. He's been blocked, he's been double-teamed, but he Second keeps coming. Great effort. You can see he kind of power rushes that time. 
as Bailey kind of slipped, but uh, it's four down territory the rest of the game. Second and 10. Play action, Stenstrom wants to go over the middle and over through Justin Armour. And it brings up third and long. You know, a lot of people are always critical of teams prevent defenses in these types of situations, Brad, but when you know, it, the tough thing and the fans don't realize is when a team has four downs to make a first down, it's very tough on a defense to stop them in these situations, no matter what defense you call. When you're playing down 10 points, you know, you got four tries at making 10 yards. That's 33% more plays than you had before. Manning, the man with the most speed to the bottom of your screen, the freshman. Stenstrom over the middle. Going to be close to a first down. Ethan Allen made the catch. Got cartwheeled by Ted Johnson. And let's see where they spot it. This spot maybe is as important as the play itself. And they're going to take a look at it. Bill Walsh is always two or three plays ahead in his play calling anyway. He, he knows the play. If it's short, he's going to call. And he knows the play. If it's a first down, he's going to call. is a first down. No, it's not. Oof, that close. So the fourth down on inches for Stanford. This is the ball game for them right here with 435 left. They've got to get this. Got a four wide receiver look with Allen as the single setback. Fourth and inches. And it's Stenstrom quarterback sneaking for the first down. Try to spread things out a little bit and then just take your quarterback who's pretty good size, 205 pounder, and just lean in there. So that worked. Jeff Bucky, a nice block. He is a sophomore, 6'5, 280, who they think is going to maybe be the best guard ever when he's done playing football. The best guard ever to play here in Palo Alto. They've had some great tackles like the Bob Whitfields and that, but uh, they say this kid is the guy they go behind, and they did there for the first time. Four minutes left in the ball game. Colorado 37, Stanford 27, but a fresh set of downs for the Cardinals. And here's Justin Armour and a lateral to Shaw. And he got it inside the 40. They're using the whole playbook, yeah. and it's a thick one. The freshmen came in and were amazed at how big the playbook is. And right now, they know why there's about 1,000 plays in the playbook, because we've seen about 600 of them tonight, I think. The freshmen came in, and they said, we thought this thing was a Bible. We were used to a little playbook in high school. We saw Coach Walsh's playbook. So I asked Bill yesterday, I said, Coach, just show me your playbook. It is the exact same size as the San Francisco 49ers. The shade of red is just a little different. Stenstrom. Flushed. Goes deep. Armour's there. He's got it. Touchdown. That was a 38-yard touchdown pass to Justin Armour from Steve Stenstrom. It's Armour all time. <laughs> 38 yards. Now yeah, we've still got a ball game. You're going to see Armour come in, and when he reads the quarterback, break the route. This is something they practice. He break out of the pocket. He breaks his route, goes deep, and one may person makes a mistake, and Dwayne Davis goes the wrong way, and it's a touchdown. Nine catches, 142 yards, and three touchdowns for Armour. Extra point coming up. It's big, and it's good. And it's 37-34. We still have 3.33 to play. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do with onside kick because no matter what they do, they're in trouble when Colorado has the play. We'll find out what they do when we come back. Three minutes and 33 seconds. We'll keep it right here. Justin Armour. He's not just a wide receiver. They switched him to tight end in the spring, then moved him back to split end in the fall. And this time he's able to fall in the end zone with his third touchdown of the night. I'll tell you, three different coaches told us when Stenstrom comes out of the pocket, he makes a lot of bad throws. But tonight, he has made nothing but strikes from outside the pocket. Justin Armour. A touchdown last week, three tonight. He was his 
valedictorian in high school. He was first team all state two years in basketball. He was a president of the senior class, student body, student council, editor of the high school newspaper, the lead actor in all the plays, the lead vocalist, everything in choir. And then he taught French to first graders just for yucks. Yeah. The kind of kid I guess maybe you'd want your daughter to meet, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the only thing is he wasn't a paper boy, was he? <laughs> I'll tell you, what a great game, national television, and uh, you just got to be impressed with that type of, of a drive and that type of an effort that this guy's had tonight. 67 yards, six plays, five passes, and one and very important run by Stenstrom, remember, on fourth and inches on the quarterback, uh, quarterback sneak. Brad, and in 126, they're back in the end zone. Brad, uh, you know, you, uh, we talked about an onside kick, but they scored so fast, I think they're just going to kick it down and take one more chance on defense. Mills will kick deep. He's done it well tonight. Westbrook shades over and takes it at the Michael goal line. Westbrook, number one. Michael's in trouble, and down he goes at about the 13, so the deep kick paid off. John Sims has made a couple of stops on special teams tonight, and he has another one there. Well, this is about as much fun as you can have, huh? Absolutely. I, you know, I felt last time when Colorado was in there, they were trying to prove a point that they could run the ball without running the option and just get tough and out muscle it. But when you play such an explosive offense like that, when you punt the ball on fourth and inches, you, you run the risk of team getting back in the football game. Worst field position of this half for Colorado. They work from the 13-yard line. And now the fans, everybody on their feet with 3.26 to go. Stewart. Oh. What a catch by Johnson at the 21-yard line. Wow. What a catch. One of the officials now saying no catch, and they'll bring it back. No matter what it was, it, it was as great an effort out for a catch as I see, because I tell you, Vaughn Bryant, number four, had his number written all over this thing. He was going to intercept this and go in the end zone and be the hero. Watch him run by this thing. What a play, and yes, it does come out. Good call. Great camera work. That's a nice shot. Wow. This is, second and ten. This is exciting. Stanford swarms him at the 19, where it'll be third down and five. Boyd Gibbs made the tackle. Let's go down to Rick Walker. Rick? Hey, Brad, Gary, got an interesting one for you. I went over to Steve's system. I said, Steve, what do you call that in the Bill Walsh playbook? He said, it's not in the playbook. I told the guys that if you get outside, the, if I get outside the pocket, just go down and up and I'll hit you. I don't know if the genius will like that. <laughs> Back to you guys. Go down to the telephone pole, hang a left, go around the old 59 Mercury, and I'll get it to you. Colorado looking for some of that magic here. Third and five. And Westbrook can't hold on. Fourth down. Cordell Stewart pulled the string on that throw, Brad. He had him wide open, and he threw it low into the ground. It came with an all-out blitz, but Michael Westbrook had his man wide beaten, and he was wide open, and he just threw it low. The two times the Stanford defense absolutely had to stop Colorado and force a punt, and they have done it the last two times, and they force another, and Berger's got to kick this one from his own five-yard line. Barring a booming punt, the Cardinals should have great field position and about two and a half minutes to work. And it's not a booming punt. It's off the side of his foot, and it's out of bounds. Stanford's going to have it in Colorado territory. Only a 20-yard punt with 2.32 left, and Stanford only 46 yards away from a win. Okay, pull away from the curb and take a left at the end of the block. Yes, sir. Is this a new trooper? Uh, yes, sir. It's my mom's. Tell you what, take a right instead. Yes, sir. If ever there was an excuse for driving a little bit out of your way, this is it. Very nice. Wait, I didn't get to Parallel Park. You're right. The Isuzu Trooper, practically amazing. Very nice.
Delta faucet has over a thousand different styles of faucets to choose from. Just a sec. So there's a Delta faucet that's right for everyone's needs. Oh, okay, I'll get the food, you get the water. Delta, the way water is brought to life. And don't forget to turn it off. Go ahead, make a wish. Then share it with your Allstate agent, who knows planning makes wishes come true and who can outline a life insurance plan to assure family security and college funding and a comfy retirement are in the stars for you. So make your wish and trust it to your Allstate agent who wants to be your agent for life. As we went to break, how about Bill McCartney in the heat of battle taking his punter aside who just shanked a kick and saying, hey, yeah. You know, you know he, he knew, and he's talking to Cordell right now. I mean, nobody wants to shake a butt in that situation. No use chewing a guy out in that situation. Great football coach. Stanford with a chance to win. Big opener. All the way to the 27-yard line goes Ethan Allen. 19 yards. I'll tell you, they have run about every trick play that you can in the fourth quarter of a game. This was an influence-type quick trap play, a Monty Clark special. Watch them cross these people. They pull linemen in the wrong direction and run a sucker play on the linebackers is into the secondary. 2.27 left. First and 10, Stanford trailing by three. This is Ellery Roberts with a flag down at the end of the play. And that, that came from the side where they call holding, too, uh, on the tight end from the uh, sideline judge. Tony yeah. Klein, I'll bet, is going to get called for holding. This one goes against the Cardinal. When you grab from the outside, that sideline judge there from the back is, is instructed to look for that outside hand, and that's exactly what happened. It'll be the sixth penalty of the night for 50 yards against Stanford. I'll tell you, uh, Bill McCartney on the sideline right now has gathered at Cordell Stewart, Charles Johnson, Michael Westbrook. He's preparing for the next drive, which is exactly what you have to do when you're a position coach. You can't get caught up in the game because you got to get your guys ready to play. If they score, get out there, guys. we got to put points on the board again. Remember what we told you, whoever has the ball last probably <laughs> could win the game. Down to 2 19 clock ticking. In Palo Alto, where Colorado leads, 37-34, but Stanford trying to change that first down at 17. Back at the 36-yard line. Stenstrom throws short. Roberts on the run. And Roberts pulls his way to the 20. If you have backs that know how to catch the ball, and if you have a coach that knows how to get your backs out of the backfield in a two-man set, you will be a successful passing team. John Makovic does it. Steve Spurrier does it. George Welch does it at uh, Virginia. You were able to throw the ball to your backs. You will be successful. Nobody does it better than that man. Second down and two. After a 15-yard pickup on first down. Right into the meat of the Colorado defense and short of the first down is Ethan Allen. He probably got a yard, but he didn't get two. But it's also providing one other thing. It's taking time off the clock. You don't want to score with two minutes left in this game. You want to score with about 12 seconds. <laughs> That's right. It's a real chess match right now. And that guy is the chess master, or at least was in the National Football League. Three Super Bowl crowns. He's certainly not thinking about that now. Third down, almost two. Stenstrom off play action. Armour again. A gain of 12. An unbelievable night by the wide receiving core on both sides when, tonight. When Armour has lined up in a tight split, it has baffled Colorado's defense all night. They have not been able to account for him, and he's running wide open on those crossing routes all night. We're under 30 seconds. First and goal, Stanford at the seventh. Pitch, Roberts. 
to the four. And now you got to see a timeout with 16 seconds left. Uh, what a ball game. Yeah, now I'm going to predict what's going to happen. He's going to throw on second down, so if he gets an incomplete pa pass, he can run the ball on third down and still have the availability to kick the field goal on fourth down. Bill Walsh has said our team may be too youthful for our schedule. Well, he's got eighth-ranked Colorado within 16 seconds of pulling off another Stanford upset. I'll tell you, uh, I if I was in this situation and on fourth down, I still had four or five yards to go for a touchdown, I would kick the field goal, tie the game. You've got a lot of tough games this year, and I would not want my team to walk off this field at a loss on a fourth down play. I think they've given a great game. If they tie the game, hey, it's two even teams and we tied them. As much as people hate ties, this is almost a game where you go home and say, hey, that was not a bad football I've game. I've seen a lot of good hockey games that end up 2-2 two, two and 1-1. One, right. one. Baseball tonight follows the game, which has 16 seconds of clock time remaining. If, if I was Colorado right now, I would try to find number 80 because he's going to take you to where the ball's going to go. I would try to find number 80 because he has caught it 10 times for 154 yards and three touchdowns. And keep in mind, Tony Klein, the tight end, has had a career night as well. Well, there's number 80, and Klein's lined up on the left side, and it is second and goal at the five with 16 seconds remaining. Throw it to the back of the end zone. Stenstrom had it batted down by Ted Johnson. <laughs> you could Ted, Ted's going, why didn't I hold on to that ball? Yeah, well, you could almost call the play. That was going to be a quick pass so that they could come in on third down and maybe now have the position to draw or pass. Bill Walsh looking at that all-important sheet in front of him. Here's another look at the play. And I'll tell you why he almost intercepted this one. I think Armour fooled Stenstrom. It was a read route. He could either go on the fade or the slant, and he pulled the string at the last second, and it almost an interception. Third down and goal. Stenstrom, end zone, touchdown! No, it's broken up. Klein had it. Davis popped him, but they're going to give him the touchdown. I'll tell you, that's a very questionable football call right there. He did not come down with that ball. There is a conference going on in the end zone. I'll tell you what happened. The other wide receiver ran his man into the player. Paul Nickel, the other tight end, brought in the defensive back, and I believe it was Dwayne Davis, number 21. He wasn't even covering the guy on that play. There was a conference among the officials. I don't know if his feet came down to the ground that time. Dwayne Davis let him have it just as he caught the ball. He was not covering that man. It was a poorly run route by Nickel. Let's see how long he has the ball and if he comes down with it. Klein clearly catches the ball and his foot comes down. That's a touchdown. Oh, man. Is the 11th catch for Tony Klein. 119 yards, Stenstrom. His fifth touchdown pass of the night. And Brad, the best thing for Stanford and Bill Walsh is there's eight seconds left on the clock. The call that Bill McCartney's gonna wanna have back is the, the third down call when they ran the isolation play instead of running the option, when they could have put the game away early with about five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. The pass to Klein, his right foot comes down, then he's hit in the chin and the ball comes out. It's a great play by Davis. Sendstrom calls the touchdown. And a finished off, Walsh, He's probably still getting ready for the next call. <laughs> I'll tell you. There's a little bit of emotion from Coach Walsh, and the headsets go off. I guess he's done talking to everybody, including the coordinators. I think he's wired to God. 
That's like Terry Shea being his offensive coordinator. Being Bill Walsh's offensive coordinator is like being Superman strength and conditioning coach. You know what I mean? That's just... So we got eight seconds left. Makes you feel good, right? And unless the Buffaloes can figure out, and you'll see the shock on Bill McCartney's face. Uh, there's no doubt about it. This there. will be the sixth straight. He, they called a personal foul on the argument in the end zone, and that's uh, what upset Coach McCartney even more. Well, that's one where, you, you know, you think you have an argument, and even when they look at that on replay, they're going to think the same thing. If you're a Colorado fan, I think you think that. And just an unbelievable ball game. When they had the 10-point lead, they decided to show that they were going to run the ball and prove that they could run the ball, and it backfired on them. Bill McCartney has a great offensive football team, and they will have a great year this year. But this is one game that he's going to look back at as one that he gave away. And now how much confidence must this give this young Stanford team as the squip kick is taken? Westbrook, Michael would have to break it for a touchdown to win the game. Well, there's going to be a play left. Yeah, three seconds left. And with Charles Johnson on the field, you never know. One thing you will not, you cannot let them get behind you. Even if they catch the ball, they don't have time for another play. We saw Stanford with a hook and lateral earlier. They pulled out everything they had in their playbook. Well, Colorado's got one play left. Yeah. What do they come up with in there? This could be the Stanford Cal Tuba play right here. It may need that for Colorado to pull off the one play miracle. Stewart buys himself some time and now he'll load it. He'll probably hope for a penalty. He threw it a mile and it's broken up. And the Stanford Cardinal pulls another upset. What an absolutely tremendous offensive football game by both sides. They both deserve a hug. Absolutely. Cordell Stewart started slow, came on strong, and it was a great football game, as good as I've seen. 41-37, Stanford wins it. There's two class guys, and here's a classic ending for Stanford. For Rick Walker and Gary Danielson and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Brad Nessler from Palo Alto. They don't come much better than this, folks. There is one company. We can get home in time to maybe catch this. <laughs> oh, I'll be rushing. It's, it's can Joe, I now? <laughs> Joe Girardi, stand by. Joe Girardi and Michael Young together at last. Tonight, 11.05 on Sports uh, Action. But you're on there too, right? Yeah, that's yeah. the three of us. Oh, you know. Yeah. Can't have everything. <laughs> Two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Gary. Gary. Still to come on News 4 tonight, celebrating cultural diversity. A day to experience African art at the Denver Art Museum. It's not what you know, but who you know. Well, I do know this. If you want to get a great deal on a great car, you should get to know your Lincoln Mercury dealer. At Cump Lincoln Mercury, Sable is priced at only $16,999 with $14 to choose from. Sable offers a fuel-efficient V6 and standard dual airbags, all just $16,999. Cump Lincoln Mercury, driven to satisfy since 1919. Well, now you know. See your Denver Lincoln Mercury dealer. See Cump Lincoln Mercury Inglewood today. You protect yourself inside your car. Protect yourself under the hood, too. Walmart helps you take care of your car and your budget. Haviland Formula 3 provides complete engine protection. Or try Haviland Synthetic Motor Oil for better protection for the long run. Either way, you add more life to your car. And because we always sell for less, Walmart's better protection, too. Like a seatbelt for your wallet. Walmart. Always the low price. Always. Always. 